Ah, why is he always late? I've been waiting for my boyfriend Kevin for the last half an hour. I craned my head to see if he was coming, but the only people around were a cuddling couple. I watched the guy kiss his girlfriend on the cheek, then led her over to the Porsche parked nearby. Oh wow, if only... But wait, that guy... Oh my god, it's Kevin! Thanks for the gift, babe. But wouldn't this Gucci wallet look even more perfect with a pair of Briani pants? You jerk! I shouted as I threw the cake I was holding at his shocked face. To the surprise of the new girlfriend, he immediately denied knowing me and made out I must be crazy. What? However, once the girl got in the car, he turned to me. We're done. You may have a pretty face, but you're just some poor little orphan. What? What did he just say? Poor little orphan? I trusted him. I loved him. But it turns out he was just a lying, cheating gold digger. My heart ached through this betrayal, but I still had to drag myself to work. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm Linda. I've lived at this orphanage since I was little, and my job is to take care of the vegetable garden. Hmm, if only one day a king would appear, tell me I was the long-lost princess, then take me back to his magnificent kingdom. <sighs> I was just putting on my gloves when a nun rushed over to me. Oh no, busted. I was gonna get nagged for being late. But to my surprise, she smiled as she handed me a piece of paper. Oh my god, I can't believe it! I've been adopted! Curious, I flipped the paper and checked my adopter's information. Huh? Their year of birth was only 2000? I was eager to read more, but the nun took the paper back. I must have misread it. No way my adopter is barely older than me. The nun pointed to the gate. A Mercedes was there with a bodyguard in black. Next to him was a woman wearing a long skirt, a mask, and sunglasses. Is that the person who adopted me? Am I finally going to be a rich mistress living in the big castle with my millionaire parents? Well, yep. I'm now sitting in this expensive car with my adoptive mother. I was so excited. But the whole ride, she didn't say a word. And this weirdness continued until we stopped in front of this incredible mansion. As soon as we entered the place, a maid hurried over and bowed to us. Only then did my foster mother turn to me, take off her sunglasses and say, Hi Martha, welcome to your new home, my daughter. Oh, she sounds so young. So she must really be born in 2000. But this girl who's just my sister's age just called me daughter? That's so weird. This definitely would take some getting used to. Then mom told the chauffeur to start the car as it was time for my makeover. Wow, another car? Huh? Isn't that a limousine? This was insane! And boom, here I am at a luxury beauty salon. I didn't know what half of these shimmering, expensive-looking products were. I let the beautician do her thing and boom again. When I opened my eyes, a stranger stared back at me. Wow, with his curly blonde hair and layers of makeup, I looked at least five years older. Oh man, goodbye my cool blue streaks. Before I could complain, my new mom handed me an outfit. Wait, wait, what is this? This dress is super tight and short. I feel like an Egyptian mummy in it. As for these high heels, ugh, how could anyone walk straight in these things? But seeing my mother's satisfied eyes, I tried to force a smile. I'm a noble lady now, and this is just how we dress, right? Finally, dinner time. I used to think that places like this only existed on TV. Oh, look at these numbers. One meal here costs more than our monthly expenses at the orphanage. Wow, it didn't take long until the waiter brought out these fancy-looking dishes. But mom's still wearing a mask? I was about to ask when she ordered a portion to go, then told me to just eat and she would wait for me. Why though? This was so awkward. Why was she so insistent on keeping her mask? But that's not the only strange thing. Today, I returned to school. Still the same old school, but mom insisted this muscular bodyguard accompanied me everywhere. I couldn't even go to the restroom in peace as he stood guard outside. It's great I've been adopted and all, but I can't carry on being controlled like this. It's so embarrassing. I have to negotiate with mom. So I made her some squash soup to break the ice. I knocked on her door a few times, but no response. So I opened it, intending to leave the bowl on her table when suddenly someone held my wrist. It was mom. She looked at me with scary eyes. How dare you enter my room without permission? Where are your manners? 
I made some soup for you, and... I forbid you from entering my room again. I will not repeat myself on this. Okay, jeez. Why was she so sensitive about it? I wonder what she was hiding there. So, that was a failure, and I still have this living statue following me everywhere. It's lunchtime, yet thanks to him, no one would ever sit with me. I needed to escape him before his presence suffocated me. What should I do? Finally, after overhearing some students mention that the vending machine had run out of orange juice, I immediately asked the bodyguard to get some for me. Ha! <laughs> I'm sure he won't find any even if he dug up this whole school. <laughs> Success! <laughs> How great it is not being supervised by that giant rock of a guard! I was in the field joyfully chatting with two of my friends, but I didn't even get to finish my story before the bodyguard showed up again. Great, now you've scared my friends off. There he goes again, being all silent and still. Ugh, this was so annoying. I need to set up a date to apologize to my friends about that incident. And of course, we have to finish the gossip we were talking about. <sighs> but how could I possibly avoid my bodyguard? Aha! I just sneaked out of the kitchen's back door, and there's only this fence left between me and Freedom. Oh no, the stupid alert system! The bodyguard was rushing toward me, but thankfully, I made it through. <laughs> but then... Oh snap. Before I could process what was going on, Mom was glaring at me and gave the guard an order. Take her back to her room! Immediately! As soon as I was tossed back into my room, Mom started yelling. What is this rag you're wearing? Maids, throw this ghastly clothes away at once. From now on, you'll only wear what I allow you to. And you must not go outside without my permission. Is that clear? Then she slammed the door shut. What? Why was she being so unreasonable? I couldn't live like this. I needed to talk to her. I barged into her room but didn't see her anywhere. I took a look around and noticed a picture of a girl. but. Why does she look exactly like me? Who is this person? What's happening here? Mom angrily sprinted towards me and grabbed the photo frame. I tried to take it back, and as we were pulling about, I quickly took a chance and snatched her mask. Surprisingly, her wig also came off. Oh my god, Martha looks exactly like me! Except, there's a mark on the side of her face. Martha, what's going on? It took a while for her to calm down and tell me everything. Turns out she was due to marry her dream man, but then she was diagnosed with hypochromia, a condition that affects red blood cells and can result in skin pigmentation. She worried if her fiancé found out, he would cancel the wedding. Then she found a picture of me that my orphanage posted on their fan page. Stunned by how similar we looked, she came up with the idea of asking me to replace her on her big day. What? How dare she use me like a tool? I was about to leave, but then she got on her knees and started sobbing. Please help me. I must marry him. Then you can go home. I, I have lots of money. You can have as much as you want. Please, this marriage is everything to me. I'm truly in love with him. Ugh, Martha looks so pathetic. I couldn't leave her alone miserable like this, so I agreed to help her. She then shared her Instagram account with me so I could contact her fiancé. So, I went on my first date with this man called Elias, wearing a Bluetooth headset connected to Martha's. Five minutes had passed and he hadn't noticed I was a fake. That was a little strange, huh? Uh, is there something on my face? Why are you staring at me like that? Oh, sorry, it's just you look even more appetizing than this beefsteak. <laughs> and you're far prettier than the last time we met, Maddie. Every time I set eyes on you, I feel myself blossoming. Ugh, I know, it was a cheese fest. But hey, I was just doing my part here. Then suddenly, Elias sighed and gave me this sad look. My dad is seriously ill and is in the hospital. Right now, we're in a very difficult financial situation. At this rate, I don't know if the wedding will go as planned. So, it would be great if you could help me. Yes, yes, of course. I will help you. Don't worry. Oh boy, what a simp Martha is. As soon as I delivered the line, Elias immediately got up and said he must go to the hospital to take care of his dad, leaving the bill to me. Hmm, something about all this seems fishy to me. The next day, I waited for Elias at a cafe. He was late and rushed in, looking all flustered. Honey, did you wait long? You have the money, don't you? I gave Elias the bank card and a small gift box. I wanted to cheer you up, so here's a little something extra. 
Yeah, Martha had begged me to deliver this gift box to him by hand, saying that his family's situation must have stressed him out tons, so she wanted to comfort him. <sighs> what a rich people thing to do. Oh, a Rolex! Pumpkin, thank you. This watch will surely go well with a Valentino shirt. What a pity I don't have one yet. Huh. <sighs> Wait, I think I'd heard this somewhere before. Oh my god, he sounded exactly like that douchebag Kevin. Was he just using Martha for her money? I decided to pry further and find out. Is your dad better? I would like to visit him. Which hospital is he in? Elias looked confused. He fidgeted with his watch, unable to meet my gaze. Uh, um, my dad's fine. You really don't need to visit him. So you don't have to worry about the hospital bills anymore, right? Oh, no, no, no. I haven't paid his bills yet. I can't... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course, it's yours. <laughs> Now I'm sure he's no different than my gold-digging ex. I couldn't let this guy continue to take advantage of Martha. I went home and told her right away, but she refused to believe me. Stop talking nonsense. Now, take this cake to him at once. He must be so exhausted after looking after his sick dad. This would be a sweet surprise for him. I struggled to carry the huge cake to Elias's house. Then I saw him standing there arguing with another girl. I should have broken up with you a long time ago. My fiancé is much richer than you. I'm begging you, please, change your mind. The girl cried and pulled Elias's hand, but he just swung his arm and got into the car. Ugh, that jerk Elias. He's treating these girls as hard like they're his playthings. I have to stop this. The big day has come already, but before walking down that aisle, I need to get one thing done first. What do you think about this look, huh? I took a selfie and sent it to Elias to see his reaction. Right at that moment, Martha rushed into the room. What on earth do you think you're doing? Just leave it alone, and we'll have a great show for you to see. Suddenly, I received a message from Elias. Darling, you're as beautiful on the inside as you are on the outside. The love I feel for you is indescribable, and I can't wait to call you my wife. Wow, give this guy an Oscar. See? <laughs> Oh, really? Then let me show you something even more interesting. Right at that moment, I received another text. Okay, that's my cue to act. I signaled Martha to stay quiet and dragged her over to the window. We took a peek outside and that's when someone appeared. As I walked up the aisle, I heard gasps from everyone. Geez, had they never seen a pigmentation mark before? But Elias gently smiled at me. Well, let's see how long he can keep up the act. It was my turn to read the oath when Martha furiously barged in. Elias, you're a liar! The wedding's off! What? Wait, Martha? But why are there two of you? The whole crowd was in an uproar. Drop the act! I already know you're only marrying me for my money. Money you plan on granting to another girl! No, Maddie, I love you! Right at that moment, a girl stepped out of the crowd. Pfft, you truly believe I'd ever get back with you? Not in your dreams. All eyes stopped on the pathetic, panic-stricken Elias. Ha! <laughs> Take that, you lying gold digger. Oh, the girl looks familiar, right? She's Ruby, Elias's ex. On that day, I followed Ruby and told her everything about Elias' gold digger ways. Then, we came up with a plan to expose him. Ruby would come to the wedding and beg for him back. And as expected, after seeing a picture of me with a flawed face, he immediately agreed to get back with Ruby. And of course, I purposefully let Martha overhear the conversation. Brilliant! Now, Elias is currently being removed by Martha's bodyguards. <laughs> Serves him right. So, what happened next? Well, Martha told me about her past. Her parents both passed away and left her a huge fortune. She may have had wealth, but she was lonely, which is why she acted impulsively around Elias. We both learned that love is precious, and it's also worth the wait for someone who loves us unconditionally. Martha let me stay here in her mansion, and we've actually become really close. It turns out we both have found something way better than fake love from slimy gold diggers, and that sisterly love. Sometimes in life, we have a chance encounter with someone who ends up changing our life. This is exactly what happened to me, and it was totally unexpected. You see, I was pretty lonely at the time. I'm Amelia, by the way, and I'm 20 years old. I was living all on my own in a tiny house in Portland. It was my mom's house, but she sadly passed away from cancer two years ago. I'm not going to say that life was easy for me, because it wasn't. 
all I wanted was to become a comic book artist. I love art so much, but the only way I could make this dream a reality was to make money. Ever since graduating from high school, I'd been working as a waitress to make ends meet, and also to save up enough cash to enroll in art college. Honestly, this job got me through the hardest time in my life. The days, weeks, and months after my mom passed away were so painful, and the restaurant kept me busy, so I barely had time to sit with all my feelings. Moreover, little did I know how much this waitressing job would change my life forever. It all started with an incident in the restaurant. I'll never forget that day. I was carrying a tray of food when I accidentally spilled some water onto the shoes of some fancy girl. Oh my god, she went crazy. She started screaming at me, and even though I frantically apologized right away, she still asked to speak to my manager. I leapt down and tried to clean the water off her shoes with a cloth, and that's when I heard a voice. Hey, stop! What do you think you're doing? I looked up and saw the boy she was with staring at me. He looked disgusted at me, and then said to the girl, Babe, let's bounce before that waitress ruins your shoes even more with her filthy hands. Come on, let's hit the mall. I'll buy you a new pair of shoes. Clearly, he was her boyfriend, and as soon as he mentioned new shoes, her eyes sparkled with joy as she said, Yay, babe! I want a new bag too, though. Could you? And her boyfriend just laughed and said, Anything you want, my princess. They got up to leave and smirked at me as they walked away. I couldn't believe how rude they were, especially the boy. I felt so angry, I wished I could slap him right across that cocky face. But of course, I didn't. There was no way I could risk losing my job. But I knew that if I ever saw his face again, I'd definitely give him a piece of my mind. And, well, believe it or not, I did indeed see him again. The world works in mysterious ways, and I guess we were destined to meet again. A few weeks after that, one evening, I was heading home and passed by the park to feed the stray cats as usual. While I was playing with them, I noticed some guy heading towards me. Suddenly, he grabbed my arms and pulled me towards him. I started shouting at him and trying to push him away, but he was too strong. Then, out of nowhere, someone said, What's going on? I'm trying to sleep over here. Keep it down. A drunk dirty-looking homeless guy walked towards us, and for a second I was terrified. But then I realized he was helping me. He started shouting at the guy holding on to me, saying, Hey you! Are you deaf or something? Let her go and keep silent! The jerk was getting heated, and the next moment he punched that homeless guy in the face, and then they started fighting. Then I freaked out and didn't know what to do. I pulled my phone out of my pocket and played a recording of a police siren. I live alone, so I know all the tricks. Well, that did it. The jerk who'd grabbed me suddenly jumped up and sprinted out of the park. The homeless guy who'd helped me was still lying on the ground, so I helped him up. He was black and blue, and there were even some scratches on his face. And as I got closer to him, I realized he looked familiar. O.M.G. Wasn't he the rude guy from the restaurant? What was he doing looking all dirty like a homeless guy? He had his eyes closed, so I patted his face and said, Hey, wake up! What are you doing out here? He opened his eyes and asked, Do I know you? He stared at me for a while, then eyeing my uniform and smiled. Oh, the little waitress. Guess what? I'm poorer than you now. Then he passed out. I was so annoyed that I'd bumped into him again. I was about to leave him lying there, but then I realized he'd saved me, and I could hardly leave him there with all his injuries. So, yeah, in the end, I decided to take him back to my place to get my first aid kit. I cleaned up his scratches, and then let him crash on my sofa. The next morning, he was super surprised when he woke up. I told him what had happened, and that he'd saved my life. So I saved his. Then I said he should probably head home now, but he just stared at me. And that's when he told me his story. He really was homeless. His parents had kicked him out because they'd found out he wasn't their biological son. What on earth? How could any parent do that? 
It's not like he has tricked them, but it was due to some mix-up at birth. So, wasn't he also a victim? I felt sorry for him, but still, it was none of my business. I had to get to work, so I asked him to leave, but he begged me to let him stay. I just looked at him in shock and said, Um, how about you go to your rich girlfriend's place instead? I really need to get going now. But he didn't budge. He said, Oh, don't even mention that gold digger. She only cared about me when I was the only son of a millionaire. Now that I've got nothing, not a cent. She broke up with me. Wow. Shocker. But, well, it's not like I couldn't tell that she has a lousy personality right from the get-go. So I said, Well, what about your friends? Can't you crash with them? But he said no. It started to frustrate me. So I said, You can't stay here. I don't even know a thing about you. Then he splurted out. Hi, I'm Jude. I'm 22 years old. I've got all my fingers and toes, and my criminal record is clean. There you go. Now you know me. And he topped it off with a grin, as if that could win me over. He then went on to say that he'd pay rent, and that when he found a job and stuff, he'd leave. I hesitated. I mean, I couldn't move with a strange guy. But then I thought about that extra money I'd get if he helped with rent. I could really use that money for my college fees. He could see I wasn't sure, so he said, Come on, please. I mean, I did save your life last night. But there's only one bedroom, I said. Don't worry, I'll sleep here. He pointed at the sofa. I thought for a while, then nodded my head and agreed. And only for one month, okay? Then I made him shower and change his clothes, since he was so gross and dirty. But he told me he didn't have anything to change to. I was kicked out, remember? And he even had the cheek to ask me for some money to buy new clothes. No chance. I told him he could wear my clothes, since some of them were quite big. At first, he refused. He said there was no way he was wearing women's clothes. So I said he either wore them or kept his dirty clothes and left my house. Ha! Huh. Of course he had no choice. And seeing him in my floral pants was hilarious. A few days later, though, he still hadn't found a job. Every night I'd come home to find him lying on the sofa in my oversized pajamas. He was so messy and lazy. And after a week, I couldn't bear it. I nagged him. You have to find a job. Or how do you expect to pay me rent? And the least you can do is clean up around here. I'm not your maid. He said he'd been looking for an office job, but it was hard as he had no knowledge and experience. This annoyed me, so I suggested he apply for a delivery man position. He looked at me in horror and said, What do you think I am? Oh, hello, you're a homeless boy with nothing. What else do you want? I thought. Then I said he could come work with me in the restaurant, but he refused saying that his friends went there all the time and they'd laugh at him. I was speechless. I said, suit yourself, but after one month, you're out of here. A few hours later, he knocked on my bedroom door and said he'd take the restaurant job, but he needed clothes. Finally, I'm glad that this boy has come to his senses. That's great. You can start from tomorrow. I'll call the manager. And I know the exact place where you could get all the stylish clothes for free. Let's go! At first, he was so excited, but when he realized that I was taking him to a clothing donation center, his face changed. He looked disgusted and said, No way! I smirked and said, It's up to you. You either pick something to wear from this place, or you can wear my clothes. I've got a floral dress that would really bring out the color of your eyes. He looked so sulky as he reluctantly went through the rack of used clothes. It was so funny. But everything was only about to start. You won't believe what happened next. Stay tuned for part two to see how things went between Jude and I. Hi, it's me, Diane again. In the first part of my story, I've told you about how I found out my boyfriend, Brett, was actually my half-brother when I once brought him home to introduce him to my mom, who also wasn't even my real mom. I was seriously upset with my mom and my aunt. 
I loved them both so much, but they've been lying to me my whole life. Imagine how hurt I must have been. Now with the fact that my dad was also Brett's dad, of course it was wrong to keep dating him. So, one day we met on our college campus, and I told him I wanted to break up with him. It was so horrible to break his heart like that, but the truth would be much, much worse. Part of me really wanted to tell him because then I could meet my real parents, but then Brett would really suffer. Obviously, Brett didn't take the breakup well. He called me so many times and even came to my house begging to get me back. Even though he knew my mom didn't want him there, I completely avoided him, as I felt like if I saw him, I'd just want to be with him again. I ended up taking a semester off college to sort my head out. It wasn't just to avoid Brett, though. I had another reason, too. I noticed that my biological parents' company was hiring a finance intern. I discovered this when I was Googling them one day, and I realized I had to apply. Well, I got the job. I was so nervous to meet my parents, and on my very first day, my manager introduced me to my dad. I had to try and act as normal as possible, just like any other employee, but inside I was screaming, wishing that I could just tell him who I really was. A few days later, I finally met my mom. My colleague told me that sometimes she would come and bring her husband lunch, and as soon as I saw her, I started shaking. She handed my dad his lunch and gave him a peck on the cheek, and they looked so sweet together. I couldn't stop staring at her, and as she left, she glanced at me and smiled. Suddenly, I felt so emotional, as if I'd lost something that I'd never had. I ended up running to the bathroom and crying in secret. It was just so overwhelming. When my birthday rolled around, my colleagues organized a small birthday party for me at the office. My mom and dad joined us to congratulate me and even sang happy birthday to me. I kept looking at my mom and noticed there were tears in her eyes. I knew that was because my birthday was the same date that she lost me, her only child. If only she knew I was standing there right in front of her. That night when I got home, I saw that my mom and aunt had also prepared a surprise birthday for me. It made me even more emotional because I thought back over all the years. It didn't matter how busy they both were. They always threw me a party. Inside, I felt like I was going crazy. I felt so torn between emotions for both my biological and adoptive family. I don't know why, but I decided that was the right moment to tell my mom and aunt about my decision to meet my real parents. Don't worry. I'll never leave both of you. And aunt, I'll never tell them you were the kidnapper, I said. After that, both my mom and aunt were crying and thanked me for promising not to leave them and even offered to help me get my parents back, which just made me cry too. You're probably wondering about Brett. Well, one day I was in the elevator and all of a sudden the doors opened and Brett was standing right there with my dad. I wanted to run away, but I had to face him. I quickly said, oh, hey, long time no see, Brett. I work here now. Um, what are you doing here? My dad looked at us confused, and I pretended not to know that the two of them were father and son. So he explained, Diane, this is my dad. You must have known him from working together. Dad, this is my, um, ex-girlfriend Diane. I've mentioned her to you, he said. Then my dad complimented me and said I was a great girl at work, and that he was sorry it hadn't worked out for us. Brett looked at me sadly then. I told him I had work to do and rushed off. You see, I was solely focused on revealing myself to my parents and didn't want anything to distract me, but it was going to be tough now that my dad knew I was Brett's ex. But thankfully, my aunt had found out something about Ashley that I could use. That night, my aunt came to my room and told me that she'd been researching Ashley. She was afraid that Ashley would start bothering me if she found out I was trying to get back to my family. Turns out my aunt was friends with a close friend of Ashley, the same friend who helped Ashley hire my aunt to kidnap me. So my aunt met up with her to ask about Ashley, and she told my aunt that Ashley was married and had a daughter. As for her son, Brett, ever since he was a child, she'd just given him to his dad's family, aka my parents. So then my aunt went to Ashley's house. She spotted her going somewhere with some friends and followed her. She overheard Ashley bragging about her daughter, and then her one friend said, 
Oh, Ashley, you're so lucky to have two amazing kids. But Ashley just laughed and said, Oh, Brett, that boy is so stubborn. He's not like me at all. He must get his personality from his dad, whoever his dad might be. <laughs> to be honest, till this day, I still don't know and don't even bother to know. My aunt couldn't believe what she was hearing. So she asked her friend about it. And then, yes, another shocking truth came out. My dad wasn't even Brett's dad. Back then, Ashley had slept with a few random men to try and get pregnant. Then she tricked my dad into thinking the baby was his, so he'd take responsibility and divorce his wife. However, that didn't work out. But still, she kept the lie going and handed Brett over to my parents just so Brett could inherit my parents' company. OMG! Ashley was such a monster. She had fooled so many people. All I wanted was to expose her. But my aunt said we didn't have valid evidence yet. So I told my aunt I'd find a way to get some DNA samples from Brett and my dad. Firstly, I asked Brett to meet at a cafe and apologized for my ghosting behavior. I hoped he'd understand and we could be on good terms. To my complete surprise, he confessed that he was still in love with me. In my mind, I thought, I still love you too. I just wished this all would be over soon and we could get back together. As we were saying goodbye, we hugged, and I quickly grabbed a hair that had fallen on his shoulder. With my dad, I managed to find some of his facial hair on his razor in the bathroom by his office. But as I walked out, I saw there was a kid's drawing on his wall that was signed by Brett. It was nothing special, but it really made me feel bad. Clearly, my dad loved Brett so much and was so proud of him. I didn't want to ruin this for them. And sure enough, the DNA results were as expected. Brett was not my dad's son, but I was so hesitant to expose the truth. I worried that my parents' feelings for Brett would change. If they knew that I were their daughter and Brett wasn't actually related to them by blood, maybe they'd just abandon him, and with me and Brett's relationship, they might never accept it. So, in the end, we might all lose someone we love. A son to them, a lover to me, and a family to Brett. If I kept everything hidden... Maybe Brett and I could get back together, and I could just see my parents that way. That would be so much better for everyone, right? And it was. Brett ended up joining the company too, and I could tell he wanted to get back together. So, everything was going according to plan. But one day, Brett, my dad, and I were having lunch together, and Ashley stormed in. Right in front of us, she started yelling at my dad, saying that he was mistreating Brett by only giving him an intern's job. Brett quickly jumped up and explained that it was his own choice, but Ashley was furious. She shamelessly asked my dad to give her and her new family more money, including school fees for her daughter. She was basically blackmailing my dad. She said that because in the past she'd handed over her son to my parents out of pity, that they'd lost their child, aka me, so she thought it was okay to demand more money from him. My dad didn't reply to her, and Brett was so angry and embarrassed by his mom's behavior, he told her to stop and basically dragged her out of there. I was almost as angry as Brett. How could Ashley do this? I quickly excused myself and left my dad there all alone. By a twist of fate, I bumped into Ashley again. After work, I went to buy some sunscreen, and when it was my turn to pay, I felt someone push me from behind. Then the person said, I'm in a rush, let me go first, I've got my money ready. And yeah, it was none other than Ashley. And the money she was holding was probably the money from my dad. Clearly, it wasn't for her daughter's school fees then. She didn't recognize me, and didn't even realize she made me drop my purse. But just before I grabbed it, she got there first. And of course there was a photo inside of me, my mom, and my aunt from when I was just a baby. As soon as she picked it up, her face changed. She seemed to realize my aunt and suddenly realized who I was. Oh my god, I never expected that I'd have to confront Ashley in this way. Would she do something bad to me now? Hi, my name is Cammy, short for Camille, the same girl as the girl out of the TV series The Originals, and I'm 17. A few years ago, I started feeling super insecure about my appearance, and it led me to make a pretty big decision, which almost made me lose the cutest boyfriend ever. So, my two besties, Amy and Lizzie, they are so beautiful. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I'm ugly or anything, but they both have one thing that I don't have. Womanly curves. 
standing next to them made me feel as flat as a plank. And you know, due to their curves, boys always notice them over me. Worse still, they even got wolf whistles and compliments from the boys, while all I received was lame jokes about my body. Talk about annoying! Hearing remarks such as, Geez, Cammy, you're so flat. I could use you as a surfboard. Or, Cammy, I think you should go back to kindergarten and grow a bit. Well, these words stung. I tried laughing it off, but on the inside, I was hurting so much. Things got even worse when Amy and Lizzie both got super cute boyfriends, but no boys were interested in me. Not only this, but my parents also getting divorced, so at this point, I felt like I had nothing left. So, I decided that I had to do something. During the summer vacation, I bought some bras and started stuffing them. At first, it kind of felt uncomfortable and inconvenient because the stuffing made me hot and even hard to breathe since it was summer after all, but I eventually got used to it. Then, I tried posting some photos of me in cute tops on my social media pages. The comments were all compliments from my lovely people. They said I looked so pretty in my new appearance. So throughout the summer, I gradually began to stuff my bras a little bit more so it looked like my chest was naturally getting bigger. Then the first day of school arrived. It was still pretty hot outside so I decided to wear a cute top to show off my new curves. When I arrived at school, Lizzie and Amy both hugged me and told me I looked great. Although they also added in that I always had, ah, my friends were the best. Then something crazy happened. This one boy who used to tease me came over and said, Oh wow, surfboard girl. I mean, Cammy, you're looking hot. I smirked at him, then walked away. For the next year, I carried on stuffing my bras. Talk about a hassle, but it paid off as I finally felt accepted. No one teased me anymore and I didn't feel self-conscious standing next to my gorgeous besties. It wasn't all a breeze, as one day after school, it was so hot that as soon as I reached my bedroom, I immediately took the paddings off and threw them on my bed. Talk about comfortable! I went to the bathroom and when I came back, my mom was standing there holding my bras in one hand and the padding in the other. Cammy, what's going on? She asked. I turned as red as a lobster and then replied, I just feel more confident in the padding and that's all. It's no big deal. Then snatched the bra back from her hand. Mom let out a sigh. Sweetie, I know it's perfectly normal to feel insecure about your body at your age. It's up to you what you do, but I just want you to know that you're perfect just as you are. This meant so much to me, so I ran over to my mom and I gave her a big hug. Although I know that my mom was right, I just still felt more confident with my padding. Then the next summer arrived and I and my family went on a trip of a lifetime to this luxury resort in Africa. Even though my parents were divorced, they still got on great as friends, so we all went together. Okay, so stuffing a bikini top wasn't as easy as a bra, so I spent my allowance on a couple of padded bikini tops so I'd feel confident lounging by the pool. A few days into my vacation and I met this boy called Liam on the beach. OMG, he was so good looking. And you know, my padding gave me the confidence to catch his eye and soon he came over and started chatting to me. Turns out that as well as being hot, he was also very sweet. He told me that he'd been born in Africa and his aunt owned this resort and now his family stays there every summer. I also found out we're from the same country. Awesome! And so we started dating. We would sit outside and watch the sunset, horse ride on the beach and go for picnics. I had the best summer ever with him. When we came back home, we kept on dating but it was a little harder since he lived in another city. And then there was my other problem. He didn't know I padded my bras. Although we were taking things slowly, I knew he wanted to take things further. He never pressured me or anything, but I started to feel anxious during our makeout sessions. I got so down about it all. How could I possibly have a decent relationship when I was hiding the secret? I didn't know what to do anymore, and I thought my only options were to tell the truth or break up with him. Liam made me so happy, but I guess he wanted someone with curves, not some shapeless girl who was trying to be something she wasn't. That weekend, Liam would come to visit me, and I knew what I needed to do, but then something happened which took the decision out of my hands. That day, I was laying on my bed when Liam suddenly barged in. OMG! As soon as I saw him, I immediately covered my breast, but it's too late! Of course I wasn't wearing my padding, so he saw me. 
the real me. He looked so shocked, then ran out of the room. I didn't even try to run after him or explain because I knew it was too late. It turned out my mom had allowed him to come into my house as he said he wanted to surprise me. That night, he texted me and said that he didn't want to be with me anymore, not because of my padding, but because I'd lied to him. He said he couldn't be in a relationship based on lies. To my surprise, he even said he thought I looked just as pretty as always and it was my laugh, my eyes, and sweet nature that first attracted him to me. I instantly regretted lying to him. Turns out that with a padded bikini top or not, he would have approached me in the resort anyway and we would have still been in a relationship. Now it was too late. I'd lost him for good. I knew I needed to make a change, so I ditched the padding and decided to be proud of my body. I also posted pictures of me in tops without the padding on my social media, with the caption, proud of who I am. The first day back to school was nerve-wracking, but luckily for me, I had Amy and Lizzie by my side. The other kids were pointing and whispering over at me, but my friends shot them dirty looks and said to them, what are you looking at? Then to my surprise, I was applying lip gloss in the toilets when this one girl came over to me and said, you look amazing, I wish I was as confident as you. Yeah, so some of the boys started teasing me again, but you know what, I honestly didn't care. I only had Liam on my mind, so what they said didn't matter to me at all anymore. One of them even had awful acne, and the other had greasy hair, but I had better things to do than to make unnecessary remarks about this to them. So, whatever, I was over it. Now, my story isn't finished yet, as one day after school, I arrived home to find Liam standing at my doorstep with packets of nerds, which is the candy we were eating on the day we became an official couple. I was so surprised to see him there. He passed them to me and said, Cammie, I'm sorry for my initial reaction to you. I knew it was wrong of me not to think about your feelings. I should have placed myself in your shoes to understand the reason why you did that. I'm so sorry. I have the most fun when I'm with you and not having you around, well, I suppose you can say I've missed you loads. Could you please forgive me? I couldn't stop smiling as I replied, Yes, I've missed you loads too. I ran into his arms and we'd been together ever since. Naturally, Amy was a bit skeptical at first as she'd seen how upset I was when he ended it the first time. But once she met him, she realized how perfect we are together. Oh, and there's one more thing. Now I'm 17 and my body has changed and guess what? I now have an hourglass figure. I guess I was just a slow bloomer, but I got there in the end. So, the moral of my story is that everybody is great just the way they are. Yes, I know you've probably heard this a thousand times, but just try it. Stand in front of the mirror and tell yourself what makes you unique. Try to love who you are and don't be afraid to show it. Oh, and never forget that confidence is sexy. I did this and it worked. My life became the life I dreamed of. Also, be patient. Don't rush yourself and your body into something it isn't ready for. As trust me, this doesn't work. Everything comes in good time and there's always a reason for that. I now realize that I had to learn to love my body first and then step by step my life fell into place. Hi, I'm Ella, and I'm 17. Have you ever been brave enough to change the things that you were too familiar with? If yes, did you encounter any difficulties? Well, for me, yeah. It's more than just changes. And this is the story of what happened to me last summer. And it's really crazy, so brace yourself. So, I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania. When I say small, I mean it. It only had a population of 85 people. There was just one gas station, two small parks, one grocery store, and, oh yeah, only one school. Including me, there were only seven kids in my grade. That's right, seven people. And my grade was one of the biggest ones. From when I was five years old to the time I was 15, I spent most of my time with the same six classmates. After being with them for many years, most of them really started to get on my nerves. Well, apart from Rosie. Rosie and I became BFFs in third grade. 
Some other kids were teasing me about my red hair and told me that I looked like a tomato. But then Rosie appeared by my side and told them to back off. From then on, we became best friends and were pretty much inseparable. My life was good. I felt safe in my little town where everyone knew each other. In a city, there were way too many people for my liking and too much pressure to be popular. And I didn't want that. I knew a small town life was the life for me. But then... When I was 16, everything changed. On one Saturday afternoon, I was at Rosie's house watching a movie when my parents called me and told me to come home at once. I thought this was kind of weird because my parents didn't usually call me to come home until it was late at night. And right now it was only 4.30 p.m. What did they need me to come home for? I arrived home to find Jake, my brother, crying. I bursted out loud. What happened? What was going on? Seeing me totally in shock, my dad said, Ella, we have some news. What news was bad enough to make my brother, who wasn't the emotional type, cry? Did someone have a serious illness? Had someone died? Oh no. Had my beloved dog Sally died? Then he said, Ella, I've been offered a job in New York City. What? I yelled. And he's taking it. This is an amazing opportunity for us all. And moving out of this town will be good for us. It'll be a great adventure, Mom said. New York? The biggest city in the entire country? No, I couldn't move there. I didn't want a new adventure. I was perfectly happy where we live now. And I didn't want to leave. But however much I sulked, shouted, or pleaded with my parents to stay, their minds were made up and we were moving. Telling Rosie was horrible. She got so upset and I felt awful about it. I didn't want to leave her, but what choice did I have? I spent my last day in town with her. We ate pizza, watched our favorite movies, played our favorite video games, and things like that. When it was time for me to leave, I gave her my unicorn plushie to remember me by. Then we cried into each other's arms and we promised to text each other every single day. So... I left the safety of my little town and moved to the city. Our new house was much smaller than my old one, but at least we could keep Sally. On my first day of school, I was terrified. There were so many people and I didn't know where I was meant to go or what I was meant to do. Luckily, the kids there were actually really nice. This one girl showed me where my locker was and some other kids let me sit with them at lunchtime. After only a few weeks of living in New York, I started to find my bearings. I even figured out how to navigate the underground. I made some pretty great friends, but this didn't change the fact that Rosie was still my BFF. I texted her every day, and sometimes we spent hours on the phone with each other. A month of city life passed, and I got talking to this boy in my English class called Alex. He had the most amazing blonde hair, and his eyes, they were blue like the sky and the ocean. And a swimming pool. And, yeah, if you couldn't tell, I really liked Alex. Not only was he unbelievably cute, but he was also kind and funny. We bonded over our love of video games and dogs and soon became pretty close. Then one day, he invited me over to his apartment to hang out. Then over a giant pizza and a movie, he told me he liked me and asked me to be his girlfriend. I instantly said yes. I was so excited and couldn't wait to tell Rosie, but she didn't seem all that thrilled about it. For a few months, everything was perfect for me. School life was great, and I had some awesome friends and an amazing boyfriend. Sadly, though, Rosie and I grew further apart. I barely had time to talk to her hours on the phone every night. It was like our timeline became different. She always called when I was busy, And when I texted her back, she wasn't there. I know that she always cared about me, but my busy life just carried me away. I told myself this was okay as things change. People get different friends. Though not as often as before, Rosie and I still chatted whenever we had a chance. One time I told her that I would be going out with Alex at a fancy restaurant the next day. Anytime I mentioned Alex, she seemed not cool with it. But that time she expressed her excitement and asked me a lot about our date. That made me feel so good. When the day came, I went to meet Alex at the restaurant that he had booked for us. I entered and waited for about 20 minutes for him to show. 
I began to get impatient and asked a waiter if he'd seen a boy with blonde hair and blue eyes come in at all. The waiter told me he had, but he'd left with a tall girl with long brown hair and brown eyes. What? Who was the girl he left with? And why? I thought of everyone I knew who fit that description. I couldn't think of anyone. Except for Rosie. But she lived in Pennsylvania. Why would she be here talking to my boyfriend? I decided to call Alex, but he sounded muffled and I heard a girl talking in the background. It sounded like they were arguing and then the call ended. This was so weird. What happened? I had no idea what was going on, so I headed home. On my way, I felt like someone was following me. And then I realized that there was one car driving very slowly after me. When I tried stopping, it also stopped. Oh my god. Was it having anything to do with me? I felt terrified and started to run as quick as I could until I reached my house. I turned back and saw that car parked outside my house. I was shaking as I tried to open the door. And as I did, Sally zoomed past me and ran toward the car. I had only seen her act that way whenever Alex came over. She really liked Alex. Wait, Alex? That was it. Alex was in that car. Was it a prank? I ran over to see what the heck was going on. There, sitting in the driver's seat, was Rosie. And to my complete shock... Alex was tied up in the back seat. Rosie, I screamed. What are you doing here in New York with my boyfriend? Alex screamed, help. She told me you were waiting for me in her car, then she kidnapped me. Rosie quickly turned around and looked me right in the face. Oh, um, hi, Ella. What are you doing with my boyfriend? He's not a good guy for you, Ella. I need you to break up with him now, or else I will drive away so you can never find him ever. Are you crazy? We will not break up just because you demand me to do that. Now let him go. I walked around to the passenger door to get Alex, but then the car started moving, fast. I ran after the car, but I was too slow. But Sally ran after it too, and she didn't stop. She almost got hit by cars as she ran through traffic until she was out of sight. I was so scared. I was about to call the cops when I saw a police car zoom past me. How did they know about this already? Who called 911? I looked back and saw my mom standing outside with the phone waving at me nervously. She had seen all the commotion and called the cops. Thanks, Mom. There was nothing I could do now except wait. It was awful. I was so anxious. About an hour later, a cop car pulled up to our house. The cop stepped out and opened the back door and... Out came Sally. I ran up to the police car and hugged Sally. She was safe, but what about Alex? The officer told me that they'd chased the car for almost two miles until they cornered it on a dead-end street. He said that Rosie was very fierce and tried resisting arrest, but they'd taken her to the station. To my relief, Alex was fine, and they dropped him back home. Phew. I just didn't understand it. Rosie was my best friend. Why would she try to seriously harm my boyfriend? I later found out that Rosie was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. It's a disorder that causes people to go through extreme mood swings and do things that are out of character and crazy. Rosie had a lot going on. As well as me not being around anymore, her dad had moved out. I didn't know this as she hadn't told me. Back then, I wasn't talking all that much to her, but I'd never expected that the separation Rosie felt was too much for her and could lead her to bipolar disorder. I was her only one at that time, so she wanted her to be my only one too. But Alex appeared and made her feel insecure and seriously jealous. It is fortunate there are no serious consequences. I really hope Rosie gets the proper treatment for her disorder. We might not be as close anymore, but in my eyes, she'll always be the girl who was there for me when I was being teased. And I will always regret that I wasn't there to listen to her more when she needed me. I still feel sad about it all, but I'm trying to see the positives. Things with Alex are going great, and I'm happy here. It turns out city life is for me after all. Whether it's in friendship or love, people still need their own space. And sometimes, as sad as it is, people do grow apart. This happens in life. Being overjealous doesn't help mend things. It just pushes the other person further away.
Hey, I'm Esther of the rising TikTok channel at Aesthetic, where I share my passion for fashion. Look at my newest design. Cool, huh? Who would have thought newspaper was a great material for making dresses? I was trying one on and posing for photos when I heard a knock on my door. That's my mom and dad. Esther, we have some good news. We're moving. What? I'm being transferred to another branch in San Francisco. Can you believe we'll be living in that sunny city? No, no, we can't move. I'm, I'm a senior already. All my friends are here. Mom, just get over it and start packing. This is our one chance at a better life. Why can't they understand that I'm not simply shy, but actually have major social anxiety? It's a real thing that I can't just get over. That's also why my 2 million TikTok followers still haven't seen my face yet. I could barely handle the stress from across the screen, never mind being alone in a brand new school full of strangers. Oh gosh, this place must be twice as big as my old school. It's gonna take forever to find the bathroom. Man, it feels like a thousand eyes are on me. Or maybe not, but I can't risk looking around. What if someone makes eye contact? My palms are sweaty, my heartbeat is so loud I can hardly hear anything else. But then... Some hot couple walked in and literally ate up the entire hallway's attention. Good, surely no one would notice me now. It was so exhausting running from one class to the next. Now, where do I sit? I walked over to a table, but no one batted an eye. I wasn't sure if I should sit down or not, when suddenly, a pretty girl appeared. Sky blue. Sorry? Anyway, you're new, right? I'm Jojo, class president. Come sit with us. I followed her to another table. Hi guys, got space for two more? Yeah, sure, the more the merrier. Oh no, that girl doesn't sound too happy about having me here. But it would be too awkward to just get up and leave. Uh, hi, I'm Esther. Hey, didn't know they serve fresh tomatoes here. Finish your lunch, Amanda. We have homework to do. Phew, yeah, think about your homework, guys. Don't mind me. I got to know the school layout a bit better, so the next day wasn't as hard. Until I saw some girl waving at me. She looked like Jojo, but her eyes weren't blue. Must be her twin sister or a doppelganger waving at someone behind me. You really just got ghosted in real life? And you call yourself class president? I flinched. So that actually was the class president from yesterday? How strange. Then, my absolute worst nightmare came true in biology class. We had to work in pairs. Okay, which group would like a new member? Anyone? Please, help a girl out. I see you're in a desperate need of a partner, Zeke. Why don't you raise your hand so Esther can see where you are? I saw an arm at the back of the class, so I walked towards it. Hi, newbie. Esther, right? My name is... Baby Blue Emerald Green? Hey, do my eyes look funny to you, new girl? Jeez, I didn't mean to upset him. So I ended up explaining that I'd had issues with eye contact since I was little. So my mom made me pay attention to strangers' eye colors to make it seem like I looked them in the eye. She even asked me what color their eyes were afterwards to make sure I did what she asked. Well, even though I did, that trick never actually helped me get over my social anxiety. In fact, I usually only notice other people's eye color, not their names or how the rest of their faces look. You're weird, but I believe you. I don't like interacting with other humans either. They tend to pick on me because of my eyes. It shouldn't come as a surprise that us shy kids got along pretty well. Zeke taught me biology and chemistry after class, while I helped him with his Spanish homework. Thanks to him, lunchtime isn't as stressful anymore. We could chat away about anime for hours, and he's supportive of my fashion obsession. So I felt comfortable enough to tell him about my TikTok account. He still liked to tease me from time to time, though. Hi, reader. What color are their eyes? You know, the powerhouses, Colin and Amanda over there. No way. I never look pretty guys in the eye, because I'll immediately turn into a walking tomato. Same thing for hot girls. I don't want them to think I'm trying to pick a fight with them or something. You're that avoidant? Have you ever made eye contact with anyone here except me? Yep. Jojo, the blue-eyed girl. Blue? You know her eyes are brown, right? She likes wearing contacts. Jojo changes her eye color, hair, and accessories every week. She's quite a chameleon. Too bad she seems so smitten with that boring guy Colin Gray. Wow, someone clearly has a crush on Jojo. <laughs> but actually, I think Z could be quite a catch too, if he wasn't so insecure about his heterochromia. Speaking of Jojo, have you heard about her Halloween party? What about it? 
Well, I thought about going, but I've no costume. Forget it. It's not like she'd notice me there anyway. No! You should definitely go. I can help in the costume department. So, here we are. I'd successfully transformed my timid friend into King Lelouch. Who else but seek in his unique eye colors could pull this off? As his personal stylist, he insisted I come with him. I'm not even dressed up, though. Oh, man. I can hear my heart pounding already thinking about how many people will be in there. But I'm not the type to abandon my friend. So, let's go. As soon as everyone saw his majesty, they went silent. Then, erupted when he flipped his cape. Look at him. <laughs> his ego must be through the roof right now. I then swiftly stepped back to a corner. So, this is what a house party is like. Suddenly, I overheard two girls talking. Aesthetic is definitely from our school, or Zeke had some connections. Yeah, I swear this is the exact same outfit Aesthetic has been prepping on her channel. Oh, come on. There could be hundreds of Lelouch costumes during the spooky season. Girls, please stop speculating. Aesthetic is totally not from this school. I- Hey there, what's your costume? A shy, cute girl? I- I, um, nice Stranger Things shirt. Yeah, I look even better than Eddie, don't I? Um, yeah, totes. So I have this thing. Gotta go, bye! Then they ran straight out of there. That was too much socializing for one day. After that party, I noticed Zeke started to hang out with Jojo and became much more confident. I was happy for him, but he was no longer the same guy. One time, we agreed to study together in the library, but he stood me up. When we met the following day, he said he hadn't touched his homework yet because he was out with Jojo. And then, asked to copy mine. Sure, fine. But when he was done, he flat out refused to teach me chemistry as he was too busy. Things were that way for a while. Until today, when I found out the shocking truth. Esther, I only keep her around to do my Spanish homework. You know she's a total buzzkill. Excuse me? Your free homework trial has expired. So much for we're friends, huh? Everyone, look! Someone finally came to some self-realization. How adorable! <laughs> Tell them, Zeke! Did you know she has to make her own clothes? Pathetic! Who was this guy? He's the total opposite of the boy I'd got to know over the past couple of months. Am I in the upside down? It's over. Zeke and I were practically strangers now. Back to my gloomy and lonely life. Annoyingly, I saw Zeke again that day, this time on the school paper. This smug jerk gave an interview on the now-famous Lelouch look. However, in that article, Jojo claimed to be aesthetic, the creator behind that costume, while Zeke backed up her entire story. What in the world? And Jojo even showed some of the sketches that I shared on my account. I was furious and went to confront Jojo, but somehow she didn't seem to be faced at all. <laughs> So what if you're the real aesthetic? I can be her too, don't you think? If you have a problem with that, then let's go sort it out. Attention everyone! This is Esther. You probably don't know her, but who cares? She has something to share. The floor is yours, girl. Everyone's gaze turned towards me. Holy moly, where should I look? Why is this so different from talking to the camera? My entire body went into crisis mode. God no, something's coming up. Run! Although I calmed myself down, I couldn't face anyone right now. This is the worst day of my life. Suddenly, someone tapped my shoulder. Amanda? What does this social butterfly want? Did she just ask me if I was okay? Okay? No, I'm not okay. Why is it that girls like you and Jojo, who already have everything, always want to take away everything? Hey, I'm just trying to be nice here. If it wasn't for my silly little friend... What? What are you talking about? Never mind. Sorry, but you don't seem okay. Come with me. I think I know how to make you feel better. Come on. Skipping one class won't kill you, but bad mental health will. I wiped away my tears and went with Amanda, even though I barely knew her. But she had a point. The last thing I need right now is a stuffy classroom. Here it is. Go inside. There'll be someone who can help you. That's weird, but all right. I stepped inside, and it was like being hugged by the smells of wood and paper. It felt healing, for sure. I was browsing through the store, then saw Colin walk over. Startled, I stuck my face into an empty slot on a bookshelf to avoid him, but... <coughs> this place is filled with dust! Surprisingly, Colin only smiled and gently wiped the dust off my face. Um, if you're looking for your girlfriend, Amanda just left. She's not my girlfriend. And actually, I asked her to bring you here. Wh what Why? Just calm down. I got you something. 
How do you know my favorite genre? Because I've seen you read to calm yourself down before. Turns out, Colin had been observing me from a distance for some time, so he even remembered what I usually read. He was hesitant to talk to me though, afraid that all the unwanted attention he might attract would make me feel uncomfortable. But now, everyone knows I like you. Sorry about that. Don't be. It's my fault and my anxieties. I can help you with that. Esther, would you go to prom with me? How will that help? It will. Trust me. Oh, his eyes are... gray? I realize I've been talking to him all this time just fine without using the old trick. What if this guy really could help me? On prom night, Colin drove me there. While he was parking his car, I waited in front of the venue. Out of nowhere, Zeke approached me. Listen, there's not much time. You gotta listen to me. Jojo plans to give you an award, but it's only to get you to stand on the X mark on the stage where the trap door is. She wants to humiliate you in front of the entire school because you're with the guy she likes. So be careful. What game are you trying to play here? Why are you telling me this? I want to make things right. Jojo took advantage of my feelings for her, and I was too blind to see that she only liked Colin, and she's been using me to hurt you. This is my chance to make it up to you, so please, don't go up there. It's a trap. Stop it already. I won't let you make a fool of me again. Right on time, Colin came to the rescue. Haven't you done enough? Stay away from her. I'm truly sorry, Esther. Inside, we were greeted by Amanda. Congrats, bro. I'm finally free from the Collins Rumor Girlfriend label. Jojo must be green with envy seeing how cute you two are together. Right. She's here, as well as hundreds of other people. Nope, I can't do this. I quickly crawled under a table and curled up into a ball. Still, Colin remained patient. You are absolutely stunning tonight. Honestly, your dress is amazing. Come out. Let the whole world see you. The world will only laugh in my face. Okay, then let me join you. It's actually quite cozy down here. What are you doing? Well, tonight is a special night, and my date's a special girl. So I figured we could totally enjoy it in an unusual way. I feel like my insides just turned into a hot, liquidy mess. Who would have thought that I could meet someone who goes out of their way to make me happy? We chatted for a while, then noticed that the lights outside were dimmed for the slow dance. Let's go. Hand in hand, Colin and I swayed to the melody, feeling like we were the only people in the room. Then, the music suddenly stopped. They were about to present tonight's awards for remarkable students. And now, best dressed of the night award goes to Esther Crawford. No way. What Zeke said immediately came to my mind. I turned around to see Zeke looking concerned and shaking his head. Maybe he'd been telling the truth after all. You don't have to go up there if you don't feel like it. Colin was as understanding as always. But then I saw Jojo's smug face. I couldn't let her win again. So I mustered all my courage and stepped onto the stage, but steered clear of the X mark Zeke mentioned. Thank you, everybody. But I believe another person deserves this award much more than me. She's none other than our hardworking class president, Jojo. That's so sweet of you, but it's yours. Please, step up to receive it. You mean here? No, one step forward. Here? Jojo became impatient and rushed towards me. No, you have to stand here! Right back at you, Jojo. Have a taste of your own medicine. Now that's some headline material for the school paper. <laughs> so, today is the day. My long overdue face reveal. This is such a beautiful dress, right guys? If you're wondering who this strange girl is, hi, I'm Esther, and I'm the person behind At Aesthetic. This dress right here, it's what I wore to senior prom. Settle in, I'm doing a face reveal and story time video today. Hey y'all, your one and only Miley Cyrus is back once again with the Spencer Sisters story. Things were getting more complicated, right? Where were we? Oh yeah, Scarlett was determined to bring keyboard warriors who cyberbullied her and Naomi to justice. And soon, she accomplished just that. But Scarlett was shocked to her core to see a familiar face among them. That's Naomi? What in the world? Even your girl is shooketh. What's gonna happen next? Let's find out in this episode. From the moment their eyes met, Scarlet was completely dumbfounded. Scarlet, I, I... Why? How could you, Naomi? Naomi said nothing and just kept her head down, but Scarlet could no longer stand on her own feet. I'm okay. Naomi, a word, please. 
Why do you look like this? And why you did this? You know what? When those constant waves of comments tormented me, do you know how I kept my head above water? I told myself, I don't really know them. Their words can never hurt me. But I can't wrap my head around the fact that the one hurting me is my own sister. As soon as Athena got news from Scarlet, she dashed to the police station and then arrived in the middle of the sister's argument. Scarlet. Before you call me the worst names in existence, I want you to trust me and know that it's simply how I handle stress. Seriously? Hear me out. I was so happy for you in the beginning, but eventually jealousy just started creeping in. I felt small and insignificant living under the same roof as a head-turning popular big sister. It got worse when people on the internet started comparing me to you and I felt like I was nothing but a piece of trash. Gradually, I found myself coming to your haters forum, and that's a slippery slope. Being among them made me feel like I mattered, like those people actually listened to what I had to say. It's like I was finally someone, and I didn't want it to end. Before Scarlet could react, Athena couldn't stop herself from sobbing out loud, and the girl saw her. Mom? Mom? To their surprise, Athena suddenly slumped down. It's all my fault. I led you two down this path. Never have Scarlet seen Athena like this, and neither did Naomi. Where had the icy, tyrant woman gone? Naomi, you have to stop before it's too late. It will eat you up and swallow you whole. Sorry, Mom, but if you're really my mother, you shouldn't have stopped me when you refused to help me. You could have just let me do whatever I wanted, and I could have figured it out the hard way myself. And from now on, I want to be free from you. I want people to know me as me, Naomi, not your sister. We belong in different worlds. N Naomi, I can't even recognize you anymore. Naomi didn't say a thing and was going to leave, but police officers immediately seized her. Just let it go. Then Scarlet and Athena returned to the suspect's lineup and saw that Finn was still there with an anxious look on his face. Scarlet, where have you been? You okay? Scarlet couldn't hold her anger any longer and screamed at the lineup. See how you've ruined our lives? Happy now? You carelessly threw around that bone-crushing, hateful language just for fun and never paid those on the other end any mind. Now you'll face my wrath. You're Athena Kingsley of Elite Talent Management, aren't you? Why you... Oh, yeah. I am... Um... My mother! Come again? Yeah, she's my mother. Don't act so surprised. Mom, this is Finn, my agency's creative director. I'll go with her. Get home safe, okay? Wait here. I'll get the car. While waiting for Scarlet, Athena and Finn had a little chat. It's a pleasure to meet the famous Ms. Kingsley. I've heard great things about you. Oh, you've made quite a name for yourself as well, Mr. Finn Simpson. Well, that would be exaggerating. Him. I see the way you look at Scarlet. I can tell there's something bubbling under it. She might look like a tough cookie, but she's my sweet, sensitive girl. Treat her well, or I'll crush you into a fine powder and scatter it on Mount Oblivion. You hear me? <laughs> yes, loud and clear. <laughs> and Naomi, that girl's quite a handful, isn't she? Since she's under your management as well, keep an eye on her for me, would you? Yes, ma'am. Can't forget that. Right then, Scarlet halted the car in front of them. Mom, let's go. Finn, you're still here? Well, I'll see you again soon. Bye. Scarlet and her mom didn't say a word the whole way. Perhaps they were both exhausted from today's crazy mess. If it were me, I would just lie down and sleep it off like a log till morning. Unexpectedly, Athena blurted out, Scarlet, could you take me to your dad now? Why so sudden? Because I was still mad and didn't want to see his face. No, the truth is, I'm a coward who wouldn't dare face him. Until today do I have the guts. They drove to her father's hospital room to find him sleeping peacefully. Let me wake him up. It's all right. Let him sleep. Then Scarlet went out to give them some privacy. Remember me? It's been a hot minute, hasn't it? How come we only met again when you can't hear a word I say? Let alone answer. I know you're still mad at me. And I was mad at you, too. But I've learned to live with it. And seeing how well you raised our babies made me feel much more at ease. I've done nothing to help them all these years. Yet they turned on each other all because of me. I promise I'll make things right. Trust me. And please, forgive me. Then Athena left right away. But little did she know, her voice did reach him. If anything happens, call me right this instant, okay? Right after their goodbye, Scarlet received a text message from Finn. Wanna go for a walk? This is the first time I've been to the beach at night. I love how serene it is. How did you find such a cool place? There's so much you don't know about me. <laughs> then they sat down for a heart-to-heart -heart talk. The gentle breeze and the sound of waves soothed their jaded souls. Um, things do be crazy, right? Kind of, but you've been so strong. I'm sorry for dragging you into this, and thank you for staying by my side. <sighs>
It's been a while since I felt this calm. And so long since I saw your carefree smile. By the way, I just saw the news about an influencer contest, which sounds interesting. Isn't it American Influencer? Yeah, I was about to tell you too. Want to sign up? Do you think I can win? Of course I do. You're good at everything you do, especially messing with me. I mean, my thoughts. <laughs> Okay, then where shall I begin? My looks, retake a soft skill course, and... and... Enough about work, okay? Scarlet was taken aback, then went with the flow. They gave each other the sweetest kiss ever. The golden moonlight shining on the shimmering sea made the night even more romantic. Okay, guys, you've seen enough movies to know what's happening. Shall we talk about Naomi a bit? After the incident at the police station, she had a mental breakdown for a week straight and isolated herself from the rest. She lived like a zombie in her own apocalypse till one day. I've dwelled in misery long enough. This calls for a rebirth. Let the best version of me be born. And so she entered her transformation era, invigorated and ready. She even chopped off her long hair and went through minor plastic surgery to add some highlights to her face. I got the sort of perfect looks down. Nothing will stand in my way of success. Wow, gotta admit, she's kinda rocking this cool new look. Reminds me of my wrecking ball era. During this time, Naomi still replied to her mom in Scarlett's messages, but meeting up was still a no-no. The only one she saw regularly was her dad, to whom she could pour out all her thoughts. I'm much better now. You don't have to come so often anymore. This much back and forth is gonna wear you out. It's what I wanna do. Anyway, I'll be a bit busy this time around, so I actually can't see you as much. Please rest up so you can come home and celebrate my accomplishments. All right, you betcha. Better get going then. Don't make them wait. As soon as Naomi left, Mr. Spencer's smile disappeared. His expression was of pure agony. Maybe he's not doing as well as we thought. Hi, Finn. Long time no see. Naomi, you look different, but in a good way. Listen, I've thought it through. I want to go professional. Help me, will you? Yeah, sure. I want to join. No, I'll win this competition. As if on cue, Scarlet appeared. Naomi? Oh, Scarlet, perfect timing. Naomi, featuring her brand new appearance, is back. Do you know how worried I am? Come on, she must have her own reason. Truce? By the way, Scarlet, have you decided on the influencer contest? Naomi is in it too. The stage is all yours, ladies. She's joining too? No, two sisters competing against each other in the same competition at this time is like kicking off the Third World War. No thanks, I'm not interested anymore. Losing interest all of a sudden? I want to compete fair and square with you, so put away that patronizing attitude. I don't need it. No, I don't. I just... Fine, watch me. Come on, relax, relax, relax. You both win, okay? Scarlet and Naomi exchanged sulky looks, but can't hold it for long before bursting out laughing for no reason. Come to think of it, Naomi is very much like your mom, full of determination and ambition. Yeah, I took after dad and got the easy going gene. I guess that happens to every sibling duo. True to her words, Scarlet followed a laid-back lifestyle, which drew lots of fans to her. Now, this is not just a job, but also a passion of hers, sharing good tips and spreading positive energy to everyone. Meanwhile, Naomi was hard at work to be ready for the competition. She tried, tried, and tried to grow in every aspect, and pushed herself hard in the gym. She also read tons of books, enjoyed courses to enhance every skill she thought might be necessary. 24 hours a day didn't seem enough. There were days when she worked her butt off till bedtime, and she simply let her body crawl into deep sleep without changing into her PJs or doing her nighttime skincare routine. Still, Athena and Scarlett always kept a worried eye on Naomi. Naomi, Naomi, we we can can help. help! I'm sorry, but I need to focus. I'm so sorry. I want to make you proud, and I can't afford any distraction. When Scarlett told Finn, he said he'd handle this. Since then, Finn spent more time with Naomi and her advisor, and they became close. Scarlett saw how Naomi brightened up, but couldn't help but feel uneasy. Of course she'd feel that way, Finn spending less time with her. Scarlett, wake up. Now is not the time for this nonsense. Eh... I feel you, girl. There's something I hadn't told you. After that night's big kiss, Finn professed his love, and they became an item. Yay! The competition finally commenced. Scarlett, Athena, and Finn were in the audience awaiting Naomi's performance. Out of the blue, Scarlett got a call from her dad's personal nurse. Scarlett, your dad's condition is getting real bad. You'd better get here now. Should we tell Naomi about this? Of course we should. Yes, you'll regret not telling her. Right then, the host announced it's Naomi's turn. Scarlett immediately ran up and dragged Naomi backstage. Naomi, we have to go! It's Dad! He's getting worse, I'm afraid! W- what? D- Dad? 
I just saw him a few days ago and he was fine. Why now? I don't know. Scarlet, I'm sorry, but this is my last chance. Please take care of him for me. I have to go. Then Scarlet, Athena, and Finn immediately left. But they were only a few steps away when they saw Naomi black out on stage. At the same time, Mr. Spencer was also fighting his own battle. His prognosis was bad. We're sorry. We've tried our best. No! 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 Dad! 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 Please don't go. Dad! You're awake. Calm down. What were you dreaming about to be sweating like this? Dad, where's Dad? Then there was a familiar voice from the bed next to hers. I'm right here. It's truly a blessing that Mr. Spencer's no longer in critical condition. And you, you fainted on stage and were taken to the ER. Some time had passed when their dad and Naomi became stable. I couldn't remember the last time we went here together. I still remember how much I hated this place. But now I think it's grown on me. I can kind of appreciate it now. Why did you suddenly want to go home and leave everything behind? I've always wanted to make something of myself, so I chased after something I didn't really understand like crazy. The moment I saw Dad left us for heaven, I felt dead on the inside. Even though it was just a dream, I can now look back and safely say I was wrong all this time. You know, to me, being in show business means creating values for your audience. Famous sort of a byproduct, not the end result. Being famous feels almost unreal, like a fever dream. Those who flatter us today might turn their back on us the next day. Only familiar love will remain till the end unconditionally. Mr. Spencer returned to his beloved diner, and today's special since these four were giving him a hand. Sit down. I got this. Hey, my help expires today, old man. Enjoy it when you can. I ain't here tomorrow. Oh, hey, I saw your dot on TV yesterday. She really is going places. She's a whole package. A beautiful face and a heart of gold. I saw her on a charity program, too. Scarlet was still shining bright in her own way. You're actually looking at the receiver of the Influencer of the Year Award. But now, she's got another loyal fan for herself. All right, that's about it, folks. Poof, just telling you guys this story gave me a spinning headache. Luckily, everyone has their own happy ending. Scarlet and Finn are getting engaged next month. Oops, that's not in the script. Shh, I didn't tell you nothing. Being famous seems great and all. But remember, don't let it control you. Comment below if you want to see me in another episode. Mwah! Everything was like a dream, until one morning Will and the other villagers had to go harvest the crop, and I stayed home to help with some chores. While I was hanging the clothes, I got all shook up by a familiar voice. What do you think you're doing, Mia? M mom Why are you here? I should be the one asking that question. Guard, take the princess away now! The two guards immediately followed Mom's orders. Each took one side of my arms and led me away. Are we playing Interpol and the Wanted or what? Get off of me! I can walk by myself! I moved forward but couldn't help turning around a few times to look at Wellspring Village before I got out of sight. I didn't even have a chance to say goodbye to anyone in the village. She meant she didn't get to see Will off. Nah, you idiot. She meant she didn't get to kiss him goodbye. Mwah, mwah. Shut up, you two. Right then, Grace and Liam turned to look at me, extremely worried. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I was just talking to the moon, you know. I meant to myself. <laughs> the queen interrupted me. Don't you think I deserve some explanation for your ignorant act, Mia? Before I could say anything, Liam came to my defense. Your Majesty, please don't be mad at the princess. I'm also at fault. I wasn't asking you! I felt grateful, but also sorry for Liam. He had helped me cover up my outings, yet got dragged into all this mess. Mom, how can you call it a charity program when all you do is get dressed up, have lavish parties, and take pictures? I was just trying to help my people. Real help. So if anyone was acting ignorant, it was not me. Uh, your Royal Highness, the princess did not mean that. She meant... You even dared to speak for the princess? Speak for yourself! I trusted you with the princess's safety, and you dared to go against my order and let her out! You're fired, Grace! No, no, no! You can't do that! Grace has nothing to do with this! It was me! That's enough, Mia! It's time you grow up and learn to be a true princess. I have decided to move up your engagement ceremony with the Duke. Within the following week, you better behave yourself. What?! No way, Mom! No matter how hard I tried to call her back, she didn't turn around. Aren't you gonna do something about it? You and I have to stop this stupid marriage! I... I... I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? We don't have feelings for each other! 
Mia, you and I both know we cannot go against the royal's rules. Plus, I wasn't about to say this, but affection can be built up with time. Yeah, you're right. You shouldn't have said that. Then I stormed off. When I walked past Grace, her frozen face and teary eyes hurt me even more. The next couple days, the guards followed me 24-7. Are you going to go in with me or what? I I'm sorry, your highness. I I'll wait outside. Another time, feeling extremely bored, I took a stroll around the palace. Why are you following me from behind like that? Am I your prisoner? Uh, pardon me, your highness. Then he swiftly walked in front of me, leading the way. How dare you walk in front of me? Are you the king? Uh, I'm sorry. So he slowed down and walked side to side with me. Hey, you are not my friend to be walking next to me like that. Your royal highness, I'm not allowed to walk behind you, in front of you, or next to you. Please tell me where I should be then. Ugh, can he just figure it out himself? I walked off, leaving him wailing behind. How embarrassing. Your highness! Of course, this time I knew that there was no way I could escape the palace. Having no one or no place to turn to, I could only seek solace from Dad. Every day I went to his room, talked or read a book to him. I missed all the fondest memories of us two traveling and having fun together. That was during Halloween when I was ten. Dad and I dressed up as Anna and Elsa without telling anyone and showed up in front of someone's house. Trick, Trick or treat! treat. K King Daniel? N no wrong house, sorry. <laughs> Turned out the man was a reporter, so he instantly recognized Dad. Gosh, that time was so hilarious, I thought I peed my pants while running. But those happy carefree days were long gone. Even though I knew Dad was in a deep sleep, I still poured my heart out, telling him everything that had happened. I learned to be a true princess. Every Friday, the whole village would gather around a bonfire to tell him and that I was about to be married to someone that I had no feelings for. I miss you so much. Please wake up and put an end to all this. I can't even talk to Mom anymore. Then, I found myself sobbing next to Dad. The next couple days, I couldn't help thinking about Will and the villagers. Does he know I'm about to get married? Just then, I heard some maids talking at the corner. Have you heard about the crazy guy trying to break into the palace? Yeah, he tried to disguise himself as a food supplier, then as a garbage truck driver, and even risked hiding himself in the fish reefer just to get inside the walls. I suddenly felt a thump in my chest. What does he look like? Do you know his name? I, I don't know his name, your highness. He's quite tall and has dark hair. It gotta be Will. I wonder if he's okay. One night I was with Dad, reading for him as usual. I must have dozed off there and been taken back to my room, as I found myself woken up in my bed, hearing all the noisy altercations downstairs. I stepped out to the balcony to see what was going on there, and I couldn't believe my eyes. There he was, being taken away by the royal guards. What is he doing here? I immediately went to find the queen. What's going on, Mom? Why are the guards taking Will away? He has quite some nerve to break into the palace asking to meet the princess. Please let him go, Mom. Don't you think he needs a lesson or two? If he doesn't leave here safe and sound, you will not have me for the wedding with Liam tomorrow. Uh, are you threatening me? How dare you? There's nothing I wouldn't do. Saying that, I left. I never went this far, but that's the only way I could protect Will. I returned to my room when everything was quiet again. Suddenly, I felt a hand on my shoulder and almost screamed out loud. Grace! Shh! Why are you here? How did you get in here? Oh god, I missed you so much. Are you doing okay these days? I got in while the guards took Will away. And I'm fine, your highness. You saw Will too? Is he fine? Did he get hurt somewhere? Will is fine. Don't you worry. And actually, I'm here to take you to meet up with Will. We have a plan to help you escape the engagement ceremony tomorrow. Then, Grace gave me a truck driver uniform and I quickly got changed. I hopped on the truck and Grace drove it to the gate. That was when we got stopped by the guards. Stop there. Who are you and where are you going? Did I see you come in? We're supplying food for the wedding tomorrow. We have been here since this morning. The guard gave me a look as I felt my heart pounding in my chest before he finally let us go. Phew! Out of the palace, Grace immediately drove us across the forest at a speed faster than the flash driving the truck. Slow down, Grace! But she didn't reply to me. Instead, she accelerated. I held on to the car as my heart almost jumped out of my chest, and we finally made a stop. As I got out of the car, I realized we were standing by a rocky cliff. Didn't you say we were meeting up with Will? Why are we here? It looked kind of scary. But as I turned around, Grace was right behind me. Grace, what are you doing? I lied to you. There was no arrangement between Will and I, just us two here. But, but, but why? Stop, you're making me scared. Why can't you see it? We're in love. Who? You and Will? No, the Duke who will be engaged to you by tomorrow. We're together. That sounds nice. I mean, you and Liam together? But since when? We met and knew each other before, but we only developed feelings for each other recently when we spent time together at the lodge. 
But then you, you stole him from me. Suddenly, Grace lunged to push me to the end of the cliff. No, no, no. You know Liam and I. We both don't want this marriage. I... Before I could finish, Grace broke down crying. I knew that. I know you don't want him either. But Liam and I, we talked about it and he said there was no way we could be together. As I gave up royalty and I'm just a commoner now. And worse, it seemed like Liam was going along with the royal order and accepted this marriage. I... I don't know what to do anymore. I've never seen this side of her. To me, Grace had always been the toughest, most responsible bodyguard who protected me through everything. But she's just a girl after all. I gave her a warm hug and felt tears streaming down my face as well. The next morning, everyone gathered to witness the moment Liam and I became an official item. But right when Liam was about to put the ring on my finger, I immediately took my hand back. I oppose this marriage. When I was about to continue, someone else spoke up. We also oppose the marriage. I was shocked to see Will leading other villagers in. During the charity program, while the royal family was busy fooling around in that luxurious lodge, the princess was the only one who actually cared to even visit our village. If anyone deserves happiness, it should be the princess. That's right. The princess deserves to be with someone she loves and live happily ever after. That's, That's right. right. I was so touched to see the familiar faces I hadn't seen in a while. Then, I saw the smile and endearing look from Will. Can someone get more handsome after just a few weeks like that? Liam suddenly spoke up. I oppose this marriage because I'm in love with someone else. Grace, I used to be a coward for not standing up against the royal's order. I thought I wanted to pay back the king for helping my father in the past. But the princess and everyone here made me realize I only had one life to live and I can't afford to hurt anyone. Not Grace, not the princess either. The crowd fell into chaos and I could feel the queen boiling up. Right then, a stern voice came, silencing everyone. This morning, the princess was up very early, went to find me and cried her heart out, disrupting my sleep. So... I had to wake up to announce this marriage is off. Instead, the princess is allowed to be with whoever her heart desires. No words could describe the burst of happiness I was feeling as I lunged to hug Dad. But that wasn't it. Dad also decided to make Will the baronet of his village to oversee developments from now on. You two have my blessings and could return to Wellspring Village from today. Hand in hand, Will and I ran out of there amidst the loudest cheers from all Wellspring villagers and other wedding guests. With the king's approval, I returned to the palace and packed my things to leave. I saw the queen on my way out, but she just turned away coldly without saying anything. Guess some things never change. When everything was ready, Marcus suddenly came to find me. Your Highness, the queen actually loves and cares about you a lot. Is that so? <laughs> she didn't even bother to see me off. There's something about the queen I think you ought to know. Marcus and I went to the garden for a private chat when Marcus shared the untold truth about my mom. She was actually a commoner when she married to dad, right after the marriage, even though she had become the queen. The royal family never showed her the respect she deserved. That was why the queen always tried her best to act royal and cover any traces of her humble background. You might think she's always been too strict, too controlling to you, but deep down the queen just wants you to fit in and never be looked down upon like she was. Seeing me deep in thought, Marcus continued, Please understand, it was just her love for you. She's a mother after all who happened to be a queen as well. I ran to find the queen, who was sitting quietly in the library. She looked like she had cried a lot. Your Majesty, I... Marcus had just seen me. I know everything now, about you and the royal family. Is that so? Seeing her still putting up her cold front, I ran to hug her, something I hadn't done in a long time. You could have just told me how much you had to go through, and you could count on me whenever it gets tough, you know? We're a family. I felt warm tears on my back. I'm... I'm so sorry, Mia. I've been so controlling that I forgot you have always been a kind, lovely daughter of mine. I was trying to help you, but I forgot I wasn't giving you the right kind of help. I'm sorry, my darling. With the Queen's blessing, I went off to Wellspring with Will. And three years have passed since. I've built for myself a little family. Mama! Papa! Look who's here! I turned to look and saw the King and Queen approaching us. Look how much my little boy has grown. Everything looks so different here. I almost didn't recognize this place anymore. All thanks to the princess for bringing lots of agriculture specialists in here. Our crops have been better than ever, and we have more than enough food for everyone. Now we are trading with other towns, too. That's right. We also have drinking water now, and men are coming back to help build the village as well. Well, well. My little Mia has become a great princess, huh? It's not me. It's a blessing from you both, your majesty. Hello there. My name is Hope. 
and my life just became fabulous. My parents are from India, and they moved here when my mom was pregnant with me. Things were tough when I was a baby, but when I turned seven, everything changed. My father invented the super cool app that lets you detect diseases from your phone. So we became rich and moved to Beverly Hills. Kana, look, that mansion over there belongs to Rihanna. Oh my god, Rihanna is my neighbor for real? Eek! Man, Beverly Hills was paradise. But there was one little problem. I had no friends. We moved during the summer, so I had to wait three months to meet the kids at my new school. I was bored out of my mind in our mighty mansion. One day, I decided to go to the playground. There were so many kids playing and having fun. I tried to approach some of them, but they paid me no mind. So I decided to watch them instead from the top of the jungle gym. Hey, you there! Me? Duh! Who else is flipping around like a monkey up there? Um... Are you new? We're playing princesses! Come and play with us! Yes! I jumped down so fast I almost hurt myself. But that was how I met Meg and Becky. I was shocked to find out that Becky was my neighbor. Our houses were right next to each other, and I could literally talk to her from my balcony. Meg, on the other hand, lived at the end of the street, so we decided to meet up every afternoon and play till the sunset. Then school finally started, and we were an iconic trio. Becky was the prettiest girl, with blonde hair and teeth so perfect she didn't need braces. Meg was the cheeky, sporty one, a soccer prodigy, in her words, while I was the mysterious new girl, who was friends with two of the most popular girls in school. And things stayed great as we entered high school together. I was no longer the mysterious new girl. Popularity wasn't my thing anyway. I was just glad I found my place in the tech club. Hey, Hope! Meg's asking us to go to the mall this afternoon. You coming? Oh, I can't. My family's celebrating Diwali today. Diwali? That sounds exciting. Can I come? Um, we have never had non-Indians for Diwali before. But since you're my bestest friend, I doubt that my mom would mind. Yay! By the way, I have something for you. Here, whenever we're close, it will glow like this. Whoa! Did you make these? See, you're really talented. If you would, Becky, we've talked about this. Joining the tech club is enough for me. Now let's get going before my mom scolds us both. Becky came over immediately, and she was so excited. She helped us set up and helped me wear my sari, and even joined in the prayers. Everyone was happy to have her around. Diwali went great. My mother had the best time teaching Becky about the Indian culture. Later that evening, a heavy rain started, so Becky stayed for the night. We were having tea in the living room when I heard a loud bang on the door. I opened up, and it was Meg, soaked in the rain. Oh my god, Meg, are you okay? Becky said to wait for you guys at the park. I was waiting when the rain started. I went to her place and was told she was here all day. Why didn't you tell me? Oh no, Meg, I'm so sorry. I meant to text you, but I forgot. You forgot? We've been friends since we were in diapers, but the moment Hope showed up, you abandoned me. That's not true. What's that on your wrist? Hope's too? They're friendship bracelets. I can make you one if you want. So that's how you think of me all this time. Just a surplus? Meg, wait. She didn't stop, but walked straight into the rain, and everything changed from that day. We tried to make peace with her at school, but she acted like we were invisible for days, and even started a new clique with her soccer teammates. Poor Becky. She seemed so hurt. Well, well, if it isn't the lovebirds. Tell me, Becky, how does it feel being replaced? Hurt, right? We get it. You find new friends. No need to rub it in our faces. Ah, uh, Hope. Have you been shopping at Goodwill again? Are things good at home? I think the homeless person you borrowed this coat from needs it back. Remind us, Meg, does your mommy still need you to cut meat into little pieces before you eat? That was four years ago! How dare you! Was it? What about those... bed accidents? Her minions cracked up. Even Becky couldn't contain her giggling. From that day on, Meg was determined to get on our backs. We figured out she must have been mad at us still, so we decided to keep distance every time we saw her. I finally got time for myself, but suddenly Becky came rushing in. Hope, I just saw the tech teacher put a sign-up sheet for the annual national tech competition. And guess what? I already signed you up. This is the year you'll kill it. Bex, you shouldn't have done that. I'm not ready. That competition is a cutthroat. What if I don't make it past the group stage? Well, you know what's worse? Not showing up at all. So you have to give it your all and create something. You can do it, Hope. No, you don't- Hello, ladies. Yuck. You again? Can't you see we're in the middle of a conversation, Charles? I'm not speaking to you. Hi, Hope. I saw your name on the sign-up. I know you're going to kill it. Stalker alert. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Even though I am doing this against my will. If you want, I could help you brainstorm. No, I'm good. I I'll figure it out. When would you learn? Even if she was on fire and you were the last drop of water, she would still say no. Move on. You've been obsessed with her since middle school. It's not cute anymore. Becky, that's mean. Let's go.
Becky later apologized to me and said she only wanted to help. Besides, the winner gets the prize of a whopping $80,000. I bawled my eyes out at the amount of zeros. That's it. I decided to give it my all for this one. I was working all night on designs, which made me so tired and cranky at school. But so far, I had nothing. One day, I overslept and was so late to school. I was running to catch the end of first period when I felt an arm grab me. Hey, are you okay? You look exhausted. I'm fine. Stop following me around, Charles. No, I don't want to hang out with you. No, I don't like you. Please leave me alone. Just then, the bell rang, so the hallway was filled with students, and they all heard what I said. Everyone was laughing at Charles. Tell him, bestie. We don't like you, Charles. Scram! I was about to apologize when he walked away in shame. Maybe it was for the best? I was getting tired of rejecting him every day. I had too much to work on. I had an idea for an app and knew that my family depended on it. In no time, I stopped worrying and started feeling confident. My app was indeed a masterpiece. One day at recess, I was in the bathroom stall when I heard the most disturbing things. Did you hear the thing about Hope? I heard that her father's app is a failure now and that they're so poor they might have to live in trailers soon. Yeah, I heard it. Who would have thought that high and mighty Hope used to live in a trailer? How tragic. <laughs> My head was spinning. My family problems were a secret. Who could have told them? That witch Meg? There's no way she would have known. Then it hit me. It was Becky. She was the one coming to my house all the time. That's why she enrolled me into this competition for the money. She knew. I could feel the anger boiling in me as I moved to find her. I saw her by the bleaches, sitting alone. Great. Becky, how could you? Before I could finish my sentence, a slap landed on my face. It stung so bad that I couldn't see. Don't ever come close to me again! Don't ever say my name! I don't ever want to see you again! What are you talking about? Ugh, I'm the one who should say that! You're seriously playing the victim after insulting me? She ripped her friendship bracelet off, threw it at me, and stormed off. The whole school watched as I stood in confusion. What the heck just happened? I tried to reach out to Becky, but it was impossible. She'd cut me off. Was that how little she thought of our friendship? The next few days at school, everything started to make sense. Becky had a new best friend, and it was none other than Meg. I was so upset watching them at school, while I sat alone every day. Later that day, I was in gym class when the witch approached me. Looks like you're flying solo now. Jesus, gloat all you want. I'm out. What's with that attitude? You usually have a sharper tongue. Cut your nonsense. I know you did this. You were so jealous of our friendship that you just had to destroy it. What? It wasn't me. Have you seen the video? What video? Meg showed me a video of me bad-mouthing Becky to a group of girls, but I didn't do this. I know. As much as I hate you, I know you'll never say anything bad about Becky, which means that someone did you dirty. Oh, I didn't expect you to pick my side, but you're so right. That person must have spread that nasty rumor about my dad's business and got me thinking Becky was responsible, since she must have been the only one who knew. Does this mean it's true? Yeah, I've been hoping to win the tech competition prize and help that out. Well then, you should focus on the competition. I'll talk it out to Becky, don't worry. You do that for me? Yeah, I guess I knew all too well what it felt like to be left out. I'm really sorry about that. It's alright. Beck and I made up. I guess I was a bit jealous, since it was always you and Becky. And we've never had a chance to hang out one-on-one -on -one either. I really hope all these drama can end so we could just be the iconic trio again. Thank you. I really hope so too. One week later, the tech competition was finally here. I was so ready to unveil what I had been working on. Mom and Dad were also here to cheer me on. I walked to write my name on the sign-up sheet, and the name before mine shocked me to my core. That's right! I'm here too! Oh, meet Evans, my partner. He's one of the most brilliant inventors. My parents hired him to help take you down. But why? Why? I've been nothing but nice to you, but you only think of me as some dumb blonde. I was the one who enrolled you into this competition. I was the one who befriended you. You'd be nothing if it wasn't for me. It's about time you learn to appreciate your friend. Becky turned away. Meg tried to stop her, but to no use. I suddenly felt this weakness in my knees. I couldn't help the tears. I let them flow freely. Oh, Kana. Listen, you have to focus. Remember why you are here. If we have to start our lives afresh, then no problem. I did it before, and I can do it again. Don't let her clouded judgment tell you where you belong, my darling. I gave my dad the biggest hug and went into the hall. He was right. I couldn't let Becky take this day away from me and my family. When my name was called, I walked proudly on stage and started my presentation. Hi, all. I came here because I want to tell my story. Growing up, life hasn't always been easy for me, until I found friends who changed my life. And even if there are ups and downs along the way, I will forever cherish the memories we had together. 
So I came up with this idea of an app called Memoir Lens, made only for you and your loved ones, where you can store and share your memorable moments with them. Best part is the app will notify you annually, so you can relive those moments again. The hall erupted with applause. Everyone loved my app and I ended up winning the competition. I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. I saved my family. Later that night, my home was packed with friends and family celebrating. I was having such a good time. But then the thought of Becky and Meg crossed my mind. So I took a walk. I was just at the end of the street when Charles appeared from nowhere. Hey, I heard you won today. Congratulations. And you're having a party. Did you forget to invite me? Oh, um, it's just for my family and close ones, so... Oh, <laughs> I get it. Does Becky come too? I heard she slapped you in the face. Ouch, that must have hurt coming from your BFF for life. Do you see how it feels now? Nobody likes being humiliated. Wait a minute, it was you! You did this! Of course I did, moron. And let's be clear, it wasn't because I was so heartbroken. Yuck. I just wanted to date a popular girl. And you seemed... Easy. But then you humiliated me. So I created a fake AI video saying nasty things about you with Becky's face. And the same for her. And you guys fell for it. Look how weak and powerless you are without your friend. Pathetic. <laughs> with all the anger and pain I felt, I grabbed Charles by his shirt and slapped him silly. I was ready to beat him up, but he scampered away, laughing like a psychopath. I ran to Becky's house. I had to tell her the truth. I banged on the door for minutes before she opened it. <sighs> it was Charles. He made a fake video to separate us because we humiliated him. What? Are you making this up to mend things? It's not gonna work. It's over. No, wait! She's not lying. I heard Charles confess. I even have it recorded. They happened to stand right in front of my house. Becky watched the video, and it started to hit her. Oh my god, that idiot. Oh, Hope, I'm so sorry. I should have listened to your side. And I said all those terrible things to you. Oh, I'm too ashamed of myself to even face you. It's okay, Becky. I just miss my friend. I also happen to know you pulled out of the competition because you couldn't do that to me and my family. I'm so sorry I even tried to. Then we both laugh away. Hey, Meg, why are you standing there dumbfounded? It feels like I'm third willing, you guys. I'm just gonna head out so you guys can have your moment. What are you talking about? Meg, you're a part of this group, and this time we're not gonna let you leave. Yeah, if it wasn't for you, we'd probably still be fighting by now. So come here, you. I missed you guys. I'm sorry I was so mean. It's okay now. Now, how do we make that punny Charles pay? <laughs> hey, my name's Kelly, and I'm so excited to start high school. Yes. I get it, most kids my age feel the same way, but for them, it's all about proms, later curfews, getting their own car, and having a cute boyfriend or girlfriend. Okay, so those things sound great too, but the thing I'm most excited about is joining a cool club, a music one to be exact. You see, since I was little, I had this dream of being part of an awesome club like in Glee. Finally, school started. I was so eager to dive into this new environment, but it took me a few days till I could get a clue of where the music club office was or how to apply for it. No one seemed to know to be honest, or maybe it's because I've only been asking freshmen who were just as lost as me. Anyway, after a lot of pacing the hallways, I found a room that said music club on the door. Well, it actually said M Sick Club, as the U was missing, but it had to be it, right? I couldn't contain my excitement. I took a deep breath and pushed the door open. Hello, everyone. I... What was this? I took one quick scan around the room, as there's not much to look at anyway. There was a rusty guitar in the corner, a dusty drum set, and some rackety old chairs. Three girls were sitting separately. One girl greeted me shyly, so I went and sat next to her. She said, Hi, I'm Daisy. I play guitar and sometimes the bass. I love ballads, you know. Then this one girl who was painting her nails interrupted her. Ballads are the worst. She rolled her eyes. But luckily for you guys, I sing a mean pop tune. Daisy turned to me and whispered, That's Mia, and I'm not really sure if she can really sing though. The only other girl in the room had her headphones in and was dancing weirdly. Daisy told me she was called Jill and she could kind of play the drums. I looked around the room of misfits once again and I'm not gonna lie, I was really disappointed. This wasn't what I imagined. I told myself it was okay and that more kids might join up later on in the term. I mean, it wasn't the easiest club to find so it might take some time. That's all. Besides, this was my chance to claim leadership here. So, without wasting any time, I gathered them all up for a little discussion. Then I started with introducing myself. Hey guys, I'm Kelly. I started play organ since 8. 
I've been trying to learn to compose songs too. There was not much reaction except for Daisy's shy claps. I then continued, So, we should have a team leader, right guys? Let's cast our votes. Everyone will have a minute to talk about why they should be the leader. Daisy nodded her head, Mia rolled her eyes and mouth, whatever, and Jill, well, she still had her headphones on, so I took the lead. Okay, so I'll start then. I think as the president of this club, I will... Mia cut my words. Fine, you're right, whatever. Who else votes for Kelsey? Hands up. I started saying, uh, my name is Kel... Mia raised her hand and then shook it out so her nails could dry. Jill raised her hand even though I don't think she actually knew what she was voting for. And Daisy raised hers while shyly adding, I think you'll be a great leader, Kelly. I'm too shy anyway, so you'll have my full support. Well, okay, that was easy, so I'm a club president now. That will look so good on my portfolio. <laughs> now, I will bring back this club from oblivion. We will revive it. I'll have my own high school musical. I was actually excited. As soon as I got home, I went through my song list and picked out some good ones. Then I texted the girls to bring their instruments in the following day. But then at practice, all my dreams came crashing down. Daisy was right. Mia's singing voice was terrible. But she couldn't play an instrument, so I had to let her take center stage, which she loved, as she clearly liked the spotlight. Light. But then Jill folded her arms and refused to play. She can't stand there. She's covering me entirely. The drum is the soul of the song. Duh. I should be center. This annoyed Mia and they started bickering. I left them to it and went over to Daisy. Please tell me you can sing, can you? We gotta do something. Mia couldn't be the only vocalist. We'll be doomed. Daisy looked stunned. She shook her head continuously. No, no, I can't do that. It's already such a big challenge for me to play in public. I can't sing. I tried convincing her that she could sing backing vocals with me, and she'd be fine. In the end, she agreed, but only if she could wear a mask on stage. What? Fine, I shouted. Fine. Guys, Daisy, it's okay. You can put a mask on while performing until whenever you feel comfortable. And you two, no need to fight. I'm sure the stage is big enough for you both to be in the spotlight. This is just a practice session. No one is here to see you. Just put up with it for a bit. Then when we're on stage, we'll figure it out. They all mellowed down a bit. Thankfully. Jeez, talk about draining. So. Over the next few weeks, we got to work and OMG, what a clash of personalities. I felt like I was the glue holding us all together and it was so exhausting. Mia wanted to practice in the morning, but Jill wanted to meet in the afternoon. So I suggested doing a morning one day and an afternoon the next practice day. Ugh. Then there was a song choice. Mia and Daisy were keen on a Taylor Swift song, but Jill tried to rock it up and made it sound awful. I compromised by letting her have a drum solo in the middle of it. They were hard work, but the strange thing is, I was actually beginning to like them all. Mia gave us all style tips and even let me borrow her lip gloss. Jill always recommended us some really interesting Netflix series to watch. Daisy made us homemade snacks to munch on during practice while I helped them out with their homework. Besides all the bickering, there were definitely friendships blossoming there. The problem is, our band sucked. We'd only performed twice during break time at the school basketball game, but no one even noticed us, not while the dance team was performing. They were so in sync, and this one kid could do the splits. I mean, how could we compete with that? Then finally, the prom came. This was our big shot. We prepared a lot and practiced hard for it. We even went picking out prom dresses together, thinking about how glorious we would all look on stage performing in these gorgeous dresses. Before our performance was the dance teams, so we couldn't set up our instruments beforehand since they said they would be in their way. So as soon as they finished, we had to rush on stage with our instruments. Trust me, this is not as easy as it sounds, especially when all of us, well, apart from Jill, were in long puffy dresses. Talking about Jill, she chose to wear this cape instead and it kept on getting tangled up and messing her rhythm. Daisy was distracted by the lights, so she messed up all the notes, and me, while I was playing, suddenly my keyboard stand collapsed. I guess due to being in a rush, it wasn't properly set up earlier. I had to improvise and immediately sat down to continue to play, and then Mia was too into it and sang off-key while dancing, which made her out of breath. It was a literal disaster. 
Seriously, it was so bad, the baffled crowd gave a mixture of chuckles and amazed gasps. This is not how I envisioned it to go. Afterward, we walked in silence back to the music room to drop off our instruments. Then Jill said, I told you the prom dresses were a bad idea. Not only did you sound awful, but you looked stupid too. Mia was fuming as she replied, says the girl in the stupid cape. Since when has the Count Dracula look ever been good? Jill said, at least I have talent. You're tone deaf. I am not. It's not my fault I have terrible backing singers. Yeah, right, Mia. Was that what you call singing? All you did was dance and scream. This ain't a nightclub. Mia fought back. My fault? What did I do? It's all because all you played so awful, so I had to try my best to stir up the crowd. And you, she turned to me, were you on stage to chill? Who on earth sits while performing? Me? Now you're blaming me? You were the one who set up the keyboard stand for me. It's because you didn't do it properly. Lucky for you, my keyboard is still okay. Never mind, guys. Let's not... Hey, you guys should have taken care of your own instruments. Don't blame me. Even if I sang off-key, it was because you guys played terribly. Who chose this song? It was too hard for us. Okay, let's stop blaming each other and focus on figuring out how to improve ourselves or else I doubt that the school will let us perform in any event ever again. Again, isn't this enough to call it a day? This stupid club shouldn't even exist. I'm out of here. I quit. Me too. What a waste of time. Bye, losers. A ditto. Um, sorry, Kelly, but I can't do this anymore. I could only stand there and shout as they walked through the door. Guys, are you kidding me right now? Guys! Okay then, just leave. To hell with this club! My Glee club dreams were over. Yet I just stayed there wondering what I was meant to do now. This was the worst day ever. But it was okay. I joined another club. Maybe the dance club. I mean, I couldn't dance all that well, but I could learn, couldn't I? The Monday after, we all went to the club room to grab our stuff. The four of us didn't say a word to each other. It was super frosty. Then out of nowhere, this guy stepped in. Well, not just any guy. Cole Henderson, the hottest boy in freshman year. At first, I thought he was lost, but then he said, Hey guys, is this the room for music club? Hi, I'm Ella, and I'm 17. Have you ever been brave enough to change the things that you were too familiar with? If yes, did you encounter any difficulties? Well, for me, yeah. It's more than just changes. And this is the story of what happened to me last summer. And it's really crazy, so brace yourself. So, I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania. When I say small, I mean it. It only had a population of 85 people. There was just one gas station, two small parks, one grocery store, and, oh yeah, only one school. Including me, there were only seven kids in my grade. That's right, seven people. And my grade was one of the biggest ones. From when I was five years old to the time I was 15, I spent most of my time with the same six classmates. After being with them for many years, most of them really started to get on my nerves. Well, apart from Rosie. Rosie and I became BFFs in third grade. Some other kids were teasing me about my red hair and told me that I looked like a tomato. But then Rosie appeared by my side and told them to back off. From then on, we became best friends and were pretty much inseparable. My life was good. I felt safe in my little town where everyone knew each other. In a city, there were way too many people for my liking, and too much pressure to be popular, and I didn't want that. I knew a small-town life was the life for me. But then, when I was 16, everything changed. On one Saturday afternoon, I was at Rosie's house watching a movie when my parents called me and told me to come home at once. I thought this was kind of weird because my parents didn't usually call me to come home until it was late at night. And right now, it was only 4.30 p.m. What did they need me to come home for? I arrived home to find Jake, my brother, crying. I bursted out loud. What happened? What was going on? Seeing me totally in shock, my dad said, Ella, we have some news. What news was bad enough to make my brother, who wasn't the emotional type, cry? Did someone have a serious illness? Had someone died? Oh, no. 
Had my beloved dog Sally died? Then he said, Ella, I've been offered a job in New York City. What? I yelled. And he's taking it. This is an amazing opportunity for us all. And moving out of this town will be good for us. It'll be a great adventure, Mom said. New York? The biggest city in the entire country? No, I couldn't move there. I didn't want a new adventure. I was perfectly happy where we live now, and I didn't want to leave. But however much I sulked, shouted, or pleaded with my parents to stay, their minds were made up, and we were moving. Telling Rosie was horrible. She got so upset, and I felt awful about it. I didn't want to leave her, but what choice did I have? I spent my last day in town with her. We ate pizza, watched our favorite movies, played our favorite video games, and things like that. When it was time for me to leave, I gave her my unicorn plushie to remember me by. Then we cried into each other's arms and we promised to text each other every single day. So, I left the safety of my little town and moved to the city. Our new house was much smaller than my old one, but at least we could keep Sally. On my first day of school, I was terrified. There were so many people and I didn't know where I was meant to go or what I was meant to do. Luckily, the kids there were actually really nice. This one girl showed me where my locker was and some other kids let me sit with them at lunchtime. After only a few weeks of living in New York, I started to find my bearings. I even figured out how to navigate the underground. I made some pretty great friends, but this didn't change the fact that Rosie was still my BFF. I texted her every day. And sometimes we spent hours on the phone with each other. A month of city life passed, and I got talking to this boy in my English class called Alex. He had the most amazing blonde hair, and his eyes, they were blue like the sky and the ocean and a swimming pool. And yeah, if you couldn't tell, I really liked Alex. Not only was he unbelievably cute, but he was also kind and funny. We bonded over our love of video games and dogs and soon became pretty close. Then one day, he invited me over to his apartment to hang out. Then over a giant pizza and a movie, he told me he liked me and asked me to be his girlfriend. I instantly said yes! I was so excited and couldn't wait to tell Rosie, but she didn't seem all that thrilled about it. For a few months, everything was perfect for me. School life was great, and I had some awesome friends and an amazing boyfriend. Sadly, though, Rosie and I grew further apart. I barely had time to talk to her hours on the phone every night. It was like our timeline became different. She always called when I was busy, and when I texted her back, she wasn't there. I know that she always cared about me, but my busy life just carried me away. I told myself this was okay as things change. People get different friends, though not as often as before. Rosie and I still chatted whenever we had a chance. One time I told her that I would be going out with Alex at a fancy restaurant the next day. Anytime I mentioned Alex, she seemed not cool with it. But that time she expressed her excitement and asked me a lot about our date. That made me feel so good. When the day came, I went to meet Alex at the restaurant that he had booked for us. I entered and waited for about 20 minutes for him to show. I began to get impatient and asked a waiter if he'd seen a boy with blonde hair and blue eyes come in at all. The waiter told me he had, but he'd left with a tall girl with long brown hair and brown eyes. What? Who was the girl he left with? And why? I thought of everyone I knew who fit that description. I couldn't think of anyone. Except for Rosie. But she lived in Pennsylvania. Why would she be here talking to my boyfriend? I decided to call Alex but he sounded muffled and I heard a girl talking in the background. It sounded like they were arguing and then the call ended. This was so weird. What happened? I had no idea what was going on, so I headed home. On my way, I felt like someone was following me. And then I realized that there was one car driving very slowly after me. When I tried stopping, it also stopped. Oh my God. Was it having anything to do with me? I felt terrified and started to run as quick as I could until I reached my house. I turned back and saw that car parked outside my house. I was shaking as I tried to open the door. And as I did, Sally zoomed past me and ran toward the car. I had only seen her act that way whenever Alex came over. 
She really liked Alex. Wait, Alex? That was it. Alex was in that car. Was it a prank? I ran over to see what the heck was going on. There, sitting in the driver's seat, was Rosie. And to my complete shock, Alex was tied up in the back seat. Rosie! I screamed. What are you doing here in New York with my boyfriend? Alex screamed, help! She told me you were waiting for me in her car, then she kidnapped me. Rosie quickly turned around and looked me right in the face. Oh, um, hi, Ella. What are you doing with my boyfriend? He's not a good guy for you, Ella. I need you to break up with him now, or else I will drive away so you can never find him ever. Are you crazy? We will not break up just because you demand me to do that. Now let him go. I walked around to the passenger door to get Alex, but then the car started moving, fast. I ran after the car, but I was too slow. But Sally ran after it too, and she didn't stop. She almost got hit by cars as she ran through traffic until she was out of sight. I was so scared. I was about to call the cops when I saw a police car zoom past me. How did they know about this already? Who called 911? I looked back and saw my mom standing outside with the phone waving at me nervously. She had seen all the commotion and called the cops. Thanks, Mom. There was nothing I could do now except wait. It was awful. I was so anxious. About an hour later, a cop car pulled up to our house. The cop stepped out and opened the back door and... Out came Sally. I ran up to the police car and hugged Sally. She was safe. But what about Alex? The officer told me that they'd chased the car for almost two miles until they cornered it on a dead-end street. He said that Rosie was very fierce and tried resisting arrest, but they'd taken her to the station. To my relief, Alex was fine, and they dropped him back home. Phew. I just didn't understand it. Rosie was my best friend. Why would she try to seriously harm my boyfriend? I later found out that Rosie was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. It's a disorder that causes people to go through extreme mood swings and do things that are out of character and crazy. Rosie had a lot going on. As well as me not being around anymore, her dad had moved out. I didn't know this as she hadn't told me. Back then, I wasn't talking all that much to her, but I'd never expected that the separation Rosie felt was too much for her and could lead her to bipolar disorder. I was her only one at that time, so she wanted her to be my only one too. But Alex appeared and made her feel insecure and seriously jealous. It is fortunate there are no serious consequences. I really hope Rosie gets the proper treatment for her disorder. We might not be as close anymore, but in my eyes, she'll always be the girl who was there for me when I was being teased. And I will always regret that I wasn't there to listen to her more when she needed me. I still feel sad about it all, but I'm trying to see the positives. Things with Alex are going great, and I'm happy here. It turns out city life is for me after all. Whether it's in friendship or love, people still need their own space. And sometimes, as sad as it is, people do grow apart. This happens in life. Being overjealous doesn't help mend things. It just pushes the other person further away. Hi guys, I'm Austin, and I'm a 23-year-old college student. I guess my school years went by pretty smoothly, as I had my best friend Jake by my side. When we're not partying and living large, me and him would work part-time at this local restaurant. The pay was pretty dismal, but it funded some fun nights out at least. My story starts as many do, with a cute girl, and I'm talking Ariana Grande pretty. Me and Jake first spotted her one day in the coffee shop that we always dropped by on our way to work. Neither of us could quit staring at her. She must have noticed us too, as instead of leaving, she turned back, smiled in our direction, then walked over to the counter and ordered another drink to go. She was obviously doing this because she wanted to talk to me, so I rushed over there to start a convo. The problem was Jake tagged along too, and offered to pay for her drink. Ugh. She seemed flattered, smiled, then thanked us both. Then I was about to ask her for her number, but she rushed off as she said, Gotta go. My Uber's here. It was such a bummer. All I knew about her was that she was the hottest girl ever. And her name was Darcy. Well, that was the name written on her takeout cup. 
Feeling a bit deflated, me and Jake walked back to our table. But as we passed the table she'd been sitting at, we saw a phone. I presumed it was hers, and she left it there. So I lunged for it before Jake could. He looked so annoyed. Ha! Now the chance to see her again is mine. The phone was locked, but I was sure she'd call any minute now. I wanted to wait for her to come back and look for it, but I had to get to work. I kept the phone in the pocket of my apron throughout my shift. You know, just in case she called. And also so Jake wouldn't get his hands on it and try and steal my girl. During our break time, I sat down with Jake and we looked at the phone for a bit. Yeah, I know it was locked, so there wasn't much to see. However, even on the lock screen, we could see there was a picture of a brunette girl. Why would she have another girl as her wallpaper, though? Could this be her girlfriend or something? Nah, I seriously needed to quit overthinking. I'd seen the way she smiled at me. She totally liked me. This probably was just an old picture of her when she had brown hair. Finally, as I was finishing my shift, the phone rang. I cleared my throat, then in my sexiest voice answered with a, Hey there. Only to my surprise, she started screaming at me, calling me a thief. I tried explaining that she'd got it all wrong, and I'd meet her at the coffee shop to settle things down. She sounded so cranky, and not at all like the mild-mannered girl from earlier. Then again, I would have acted crazy too if I lost my phone. After the shift, me and Jake walked back to the coffee shop, and as we approached the place, I pulled out my phone and called the number earlier to ask where she was waiting. But then I saw a big guy pick up his phone instead. I was terrified, so I shoved Darcy's phone to Jake and told him to go return it. He didn't know anything and excitedly grabbed it and ran over, only to be stopped by that guy in front of the coffee shop. He asked, aren't you the one who stole my phone? Jake was puzzled and looked at me for help, and we just mumbled out that it wasn't, that it was some pretty girl's phone. She left it behind, so we thought we would find some way to give it back to her. Then the man said, No, it's not any pretty girl's phone. Don't be sly. We've looked at the CCTV and saw what you did. It was a mess. So are you telling me that we couldn't see our dream girl again, but be caught up in this stealing chaos instead? This sucks. Things got even worse when this big guy put Jake in a headlock. Luckily, a woman walked toward him and said, It's okay, Tim. We can talk this out. Well... He wasn't wrong anyway. I am a pretty girl. I'll take care of it from here. Then she gestured to him to go wait in the car and leave us three alone. She told us her name was Chelsea and that the scary looking guy was her younger brother. She gave us a chance to explain what happened. Then she told us what was shown on the surveillance cameras. In the end, we realized what actually happened. While we'd been talking to Darcy at the counter, Chelsea and her brother must have come in and sat at the table Darcy had been at. Then they quickly changed their minds and switched tables, but Chelsea left her phone there by mistake. Once this Chelsea girl realized it was all a misunderstanding, she kept on twirling her hair around her finger, and I'm sure I saw her wink at me. Was she flirting with us? I mean, she was kinda cute, but she's surely older than us, like around 30-ish. Then she said, so how about we go hang out sometime? As I see it, you owe me a coffee at least. Was she being serious? I couldn't go on a date with her. I don't feel comfortable dating someone that much older than me. And what about Darcy? She's all I had in mind right now. I mean, I could always go and tell my brother that you guys really stole my phone, she smirked. Was she joking or being serious? I didn't know, and I wasn't going to chance it. So I spluttered out, sure, coffee will be good. We exchanged phone numbers with her. Later, she texted us to set up the times and places. I didn't want to meet her, so on the day of the date, I phoned Jake up and feigned being sick and told him he'd have to go alone. To my surprise, he didn't seem to mind. Instead, he sounded excited about it. Then, after the date, he came straight to my dorm, saying he wanted to check up on me, but I knew it's just an excuse. All he did was go on and on with me about how much fun Chelsea was and that she was rich in stuff, so it wasn't just a simple coffee date but she took him to this fancy restaurant too. I didn't expect Jake would be like that. I'm glad he enjoyed it though. Anything so I wouldn't have to go on a date with her. This went on for a while, and soon they seemed pretty serious. Whenever Jake spoke about her, he went all gooey eyes. So my boy was in love. She clearly cared about him too, and made it so he didn't have to work at the restaurant anymore. I was happy for Jake. I truly was. And also relieved I didn't have to date Chelsea. 
but I also felt down about it all. He was in love while my dream girl was out there somewhere, and I didn't know how to find her. And that's when my luck changed. I was at work carrying the drinks over to a table, when to my surprise, I saw that Darcy was sitting there. I must have been gawping at her as she laughed and said, Hey, the Coke's mine. Blushing, I passed her the Coke, then said, I don't know if you remember, um, but we met a few weeks ago in the coffee shop around the corner. Sure, she smiled. It's nice to meet you again, coffee boy. She was so cute and sweet. There's no way I could let her slip through my fingers again. So I checked to make sure my boss wasn't looking. Then I asked Darcy for her number. She wrote it on a napkin and passed it to me on her way out. I was so excited, I fist-pumped the air. Through our messages, I discovered she'd just started an internship around the corner, and she really wanted to impress them so they'd offer her an official job. I was happy as this meant I would get to see her loads. Every time she came into the restaurant, I tried my best to make a move with her without letting my boss notice. One time, I gave her a free dessert, then said, Something sweet for the sweetest girl I know. Cheesy, I know, but girls love that kind of stuff. There were sparks flying everywhere. I knew she felt it too. I just needed to find the courage to ask her out. Then one day, suddenly Chelsea texted me, asking why I never came to see her. I thought this was odd. So I replied that I thought her and Jake were kind of official now. To my surprise, she replied, Come on, you still haven't properly made it up to me after stealing my phone. You know the cops wouldn't be too happy to hear that either, right? Or I could just tell my brother. I didn't want to get in trouble with either her giant of a brother or the cops, so yeah, I agreed to go on a date with her. We met at the same coffee shop where this whole phone drama started, as she said it was close to her work. This time, she introduced herself as the marketing manager of some big company. Wow, okay, that's impressive for her age. She's beautiful and successful. Maybe I really have been a bit rude to this respectable woman. So I decided to sit back and hear her out. But the next minute, she was like, Austin, I've loved you since first sight. She grabbed my hand. Jake's a sweet guy, but he's not you. What? She didn't even know me. She was crazy. And how could she do this to Jake? Then suddenly a group of people walked into the cafe. She said they were her employees and waved them over. Then told them, everyone, this is my boyfriend, Austin. I glared at her, but I had no choice but to awkwardly greet everyone just to get it over with as quick as possible. But then I saw a familiar face in the crowd. No way.